Good morning. Welcome to Science Street TV. I'm Wendy Gardner and our early bird of the day is a very, very popular piece of fabric. This, it, does, it, doesn't feel, it doesn't look like it's exciting, but this is such a basic classic piece that we, get, we sell again and again and again. It is a two metre piece. I'm calling it a bundle, it's just one piece. A two metre piece of cream or ecru colour fabric. It's 44 inches wide or um, 112 centimetres. And that's two metres of that here. Our special price is 11.96. So our early bird price is 11.96 for this two metre piece. So that's a really good price. Um, it's lovely. I mean, two metres is a lovely big piece here. So you can use it for all sorts of projects for linings, or you could use it as a quilt backing. Um, I'm going to unwrap this and I've got to wrap it all back up again. And then this, this is the sort of fabric that you know you, you want in your stash because you're always going to need some cream fabric at some point. So this is a really lovely piece. It's a lovely feel, lovely weight of fabric here. And the rest of the hour is moda fabrics. So this will go beautifully to coordinate with those moda fabrics. So a really, really lovely piece of fabric here. Our early bird special offer. So 11.98 for the two meters. Um, so, oh, okay, so I've just been told, so this is, if you wanted four meters or six meters, you would get them in two meter pieces because it's already pre-cut into two meters. So this is a really lovely piece of fabric. So um, definitely worth putting into your stash. And don't forget, once you have put something into your basket and paid for your post and packing, anything else you buy today, the same post and packing. So it's, it's a good buy. Get this started, get your basket started with this first piece and then you are ready to roll. And don't forget the uh, mode of fabrics that we're going to look at in a minute are beautiful colourways and this is the sort of colour of course that goes with absolutely everything so that is a really really beautiful piece of fabric that you'd want in your stash I'm not sure what else I can say about it I just think it's really good it's a lovely quality if you um, buy this if you go through check out, pay your post and packing, and then when you order something later in the day, that same post and packing counts. So you don't have to pay it again and again and again. So that's quite useful to know. So don't miss a chance because we do actually sell out of this one quite a lot. Um, we, bring it, we bring it in and then it sells out because it is a really useful piece of fabric to have in your stash. It's a good quality as well. It's a really nice feel to it, a really nice weight. So let me just um, remind you if you're new to us. So the early bird offer is a special offer that we do to launch the show every day. Something different every day. It's usually an advantageous price as well. It might be discounted or it might be just slightly cheaper. Um, so it's all a special offer. So this is the day's, today's early bird special offer. And it is only until stocks last or if we have a plenty of stock, and we, as I say, we do tend to run out of this one, but if we've got plenty of stock, it's still midnight. But it's special offer just for today. Okay, we're going to look at the menu, but don't forget, go on through your baskets, get this one done. So what have we got today? So coming up um, any minute now, we've got the Moda Daybreak Fabric. Now Moda Fabric, very well known beautiful fabrics and Hannah has actually put them into collections but you can buy them all individually. We then have Susie Duncan with us to talk about Liberty Fabrics. So she notes she's very very knowledgeable about these so we're going to learn all about lovely Liberty Fabrics and the different collections that we've got and we can feel and see and she's made some beautiful samples as well to show just what you can do with these gorgeous fabrics. And this is, oh, what we're showing on the TV now is one of the collections that we're going to be talking about today. This is from Adventures in the Sky. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Then we're going to um, my sweetie shop. 
we're going to tools under 15 pounds. We've got a whole load of haberdashery items and they're all under 15 pounds each. So come and join me there as I delve into all of those. That's going to be really great. And then we've got another lot of new fab fabrics with Susie coming back again and um, Debbie Shaw's Half Yard Makes Book. So she's going to show us some of the things that she's made from the books with some more collections of fabric. So it's a real, it's a real fabric bonanza day this. It's going to be fabulous. So let me just once more remind you of our early bird offer. This is a two metre piece. Half the stock has already gone. That's how quickly it goes. 11.98 for two metres. Um, if you wanted to buy four metres or six, you buy three lots of or two lots of two metres. It's pre-cut. Um, it is on the website as well. While stocks last two metres, 45 inches wide or 112 centimetres wide. And it really will go with all of the lovely designer fabrics that we can buy today. And on that note, I'm going to walk round to the uh, first selection of our designer fabrics, which is the Moda. So this is the website and this is how you buy. You go to www.sewingstreet.com and you'll come to this page on the front here and then you have the opportunity to buy what's on the show. If you scroll, you can message. Oh, please do message. It's nice to get those. I might have to grab my glasses, but it's nice to get the messages. Um, and, uh, and then you can scroll down and you can actually pre-order a lot of the fabrics. So pre-order is as we're showing you. So you can see all the different fabric pieces have all been photographed. So for the Moda, right, so the Moda ones are into the graphics already, so they um, are show deals. And, ah, yes, the, re the reason is because there is so much. We have got so many fabrics. We can't show each one individually in the time we've got. We'll show you the bundles, but you can buy them as a bundle, as uh, Hannah's put these bundles together, um, or you can buy them individually. And again, they're half yard pieces, but if you wanted to buy multiples, I always think in dressmaking terms, so if you want to buy multiples, this time you can have them as a, a piece. So if you wanted to buy two metres, you would buy four of the half metre pieces. hope that makes sense. So don't forget, do message us, uh, studio at sewingstreet.com. Okay, right, first bundle. Let me bring this one over. Is that all right? Are we okay with this one? Okay, so this is, it's actually called blue, but it's a sort of, it's a teal blue. Um, it's a beautiful one. And as we said, you can buy them individually, but this is a bundle which is, I'm struggling to see, 48.99 for the bundle. And you have three and a half metres. So they're all half metre pieces, um, seven, seven pieces, all, all um, 44 inches wide again, and half metres. Let me open this one. So Modu, it's a lovely soft cotton. And this one here, can you see, oh, am I upside down? Let me turn it up the other way. So this one is, this, this is uh, the blue colour, but this design is in, how many other ones? One, two, three. There's three other colourways. I mean, if I just grab the other colourways. But you, you can buy them individually, but you can see these are the other colourways. I've got to try and remember to put them back on the right bundles, look. <laughs> I'm just being dog years, you have. <laughs> she sorted them out. So... So these are the other colourways. I'm going to go through those bundles in a minute. Um, but this, this is really sweet, isn't it? It's, it's really lovely. This could be quite a feature of a quilt, couldn't it? Just a sort of centrepiece. So that's, that's one. So this is from this first bundle. This is, so we've got three of these larger bundles. So this is one. 
and you've got all of these let if I just sort of um, pull them out one by one they don't have a load these these this is quite a limited quantity for this one but they are I mean they all they're all beautifully put together look at this lovely paisley and again, that's in some of the other colourways as well. So if, if we don't, we can't get to show everything here, um, do look on the website and you can see it there. But look at that. And they all go beautifully together. This is um, a very well coordinated bundle, Hannah. So it's a beautiful bundle going together there. See, that, so that's, that's bundle one. OK, so already this is on single figures. So if you're interested in this the blue, then please grab it now. OK, this is blush. So this is the second of our larger bundles. And again, look, we've got all of these colours that all coordinate with each other. I'm going to this is the one I'm going to open on this one. Look at this. So that's a really lovely bundle of fabric all beautifully coordinated. The, this one doesn't have the larger bird print, but you can, as I say, you're, you can buy these individually. You can buy this as a bundle, or you could buy the cream, or as well as you could buy the cream bird to go with this bundle, because it would coordinate. So it's up to you. I mean, you can buy the bundles because basically um, Hannah's put these bundles together to make the, the decision of which one goes with which a lot easier because she's put them together with the, um, you know, the fact that she's got them in front of her and she can see how beautifully they coordinate. But you can buy them individually as well. So you can mix and match. So this, look at this, this lovely, ch this cherries, this is really cute. So this is on the blush bundle, one of the, one of the pieces which is really pretty. So this print is, it's in one of, I could see it in one of the other ones. Ooh. So again, it's, this one isn't in all of the collections, um, but it is in this one. It's in, the, it's in the mega bundle of the blues, but it's a really pretty fabric. So that's a lovely collection too. I love, I love, just love the way you can, you know, this takes the decision making out, doesn't it? It's like when you buy fat quarters in packs. It's just, you haven't got to worry about it. They all go beautifully together. Even the flowers, you know, mixing the flowers, put those. But you could, I mean, put these together and you could actually add some accents of the cream from the um, early bird because that would make these colours really pop. Or, of course, you can use it as a lining or backing. So these are beautiful and they all just go really well together. So that is our blush bundle. Let's look at this one. This is, this is, so this is the, uh, the third of our big bundles. Uh, oh, it's a bit bigger. There's still only seven pieces here. It's only, no, so it's, it's three and a half metres again. Three and a half metres. Each of them, um, each of the pieces is a half a metre, and there's seven pieces. Look at that. So this is another one. So this is another one of the prints. So this is in a lot of the colourways that you'll see. It's really pretty. It's a lovely all over print, but it has actually got the little birds in here. So you've got the little birds. And they, of course, go with the big birds. So that's really beautifully coordinated fabrics, isn't it? Look at those with the lovely big birds. And the flowers are sort of following through as well. So you have the two pieces here that go really nicely together. And then you've got, when you've got those, I will fold them up again, I promise. But when you, when you look at those and look how these then coordinate with all of these other ones. Oh, so Han Hannah's saying that um, she's noticed, you can hear, well, first, especially the first lockdown, just heard more birds. Well, they did say, didn't they, actually, that the less, the sort of less traffic and everything that was around, uh, more nature was around. So it was good for the environment. It's got to be good for something, hasn't it? 
So, the, I mean, the other reason the lockdown is good, it's good for us that like to sew and craft and things because it gives us an excuse. We don't have to ever feel guilty about the fact that we're not getting on with something else because we can do it. It's good, good use of our time. But look, the paisley again in this one. Isn't that beautiful? So all of these large bundles, which are three and a half metres, uh, they are limited availability. Look at this paisley. I love a paisley is so... Such a traditional fabric, isn't it? Can you imagine? Uh, Hannah wants lounging pants in this. Can you imagine? It would, ma it would really make some fabulous lounging pants. It would make quite a nice summer um, dressing gown too, actually. You know, it kind of has that feel to it, doesn't it? It's really lovely. So, the f oh, the first blue bundle, yes. Ah. So I'm just going to grab it just to show you. So this one, the one we're referring to at the moment, the first one we showed, we've only got two left. So if you're interested in this, it's, it's beautiful colourway. It's a sort of, I mean, it's a teal blue as opposed to blue blue. Egg, eggshell blue. It's, yeah, it's, I, I would say it's like an eggshell blue, duck egg blue, that's what it is, duck egg blue. Um, so <laughs> giving it colour names. So look at this, this is the other, this is the third one of our mega bundles, which are, this one's uh, 48.99 and three and a half metres in there, um, half a metre piece times seven different colourways, which all coordinate together. So they all look lovely as you put them together. Let's look at some other bundles now don't forget although i'm showing these as bundles every single piece can be bought individually so you can mix your mix them up yourselves now these are smaller bundles let me bring them all in Ooh. if i can get them all into the shot Let me, um, if I just move that one out of the way, because that's our. <laughs> Look at these. <laughs> so <laughs> Hannah used her fine art degree <laughs> to create these lovely bundles. It was good use of her time and money. So here we have got, uh, we've got five different bundles and these are bundles of two metres so there's a half a metre in each of the pieces. So let's have a look at this bird one again, because this, this one is the sort of the, the masterpiece, the stunning piece that we have here. Look at this. Ah, oh, uh, Hannah says that we're going to put this in on its own because this is a piece that you could buy on its own. And we've already got a couple of people asking about it. So yes, we're going to just show this now as it is on its own. So this is a half metre piece. Um, this is the cream version. So there is the, the navy blue. Um, there's the soft grey. So we've, all, we've got less than 10 metres of this already. Um, it's available by the half metre or multiples of that. But if you buy multiples of the half metre, then you get a metre or two metres, etc. Just buy, buy multiples. Okay, so it's just something's confusing me here. <laughs> so this is lovely, 44, 44 45 inches wide, that's 112 centimetres. Um, it's a lovely soft cotton, it's really beautiful. Oh, let me, let's look at the bundle with this one in. I'm just going to, I've managed to take the label off it. Let me put that back on again. Right, so this, I'm just going to posh those bundles out the way a second so that we don't mix them up. So this is the bundle that this has been teamed with if you wish to buy it as a bundle. So we've got that lovely big bird print there. And then this little leaf print, this is a little, very little delicate print, which is really lovely. And then this one, sort of fern. Let's open this one. This is fronds. You're challenging me to say a word with Fs in it. Fronds. So that's that's lovely. So it's, again, it's a nice little all over print. So that would look lovely as you know borders or um, sort of sashing or anything like that because it's just got this lovely all over print. So you haven't got to worry about cutting into some amazing pattern. It's beautiful. 
it has actually it's actually got like a little fine stripe in there as well underneath fine pink stripe but of course the other thing you can do I and mean, when we've popped these in these bundles for you but you can mix and match the bundles so you could take some of the blush and put them with this and they would also go well together Ah, we also do a moss green solid which I haven't got on here but it's on the website and that would go with a lot of these so do have a look on the website at the different ones we've got so this is one of the smaller bundles so this is a bundle which is two meters and you get so you get four pieces okay that's one bundle let's go for this one so this one has got a quite a nice big flower I quite like this this nice big flower there's no bird but you get a big flower a little flower and this is the so this is called silver and white bundle this one so you've got that same fabric twice but in the gray there so that's really nice let's look at it with the color because I'm I'm into color this is lovely and soft look at that wouldn't that make a lovely summery dress so I would if I were buying this I would be buying six bundles for three meters generally by three meters um, so you'd buy it by I buy it as a separate piece on its own um, although actually I think what would be quite nice would be to combine it with that so I might actually think about you know you could have um, some if you get a, a pattern that you can have patches or a yoke or something you can mix these up I think that would be really nice so these are all by the half meter but if you wanted to buy a quantity you can just multiple the high me half meters to get a bigger piece but this is uh, so this is our second of our smaller bundles our two meter bundles um, and then this is this is a really a really pretty one I love those two colors there together and then you can add some softer color work there as well I quite this is kind of like monochrome this one here this is quite nice so that's bundle number two uh, what do we call this bundle silver and silver and white that's our silver and white bundle okay I've got another similar similar bundle to that it's the same sort of patterns but slightly different so if you prefer um, a sort of all, all over flower rather than the ones that sort of uh, separated like that we've got this one here which is an all over floral this is cream and grey so we haven't got the larger bird in this particular collection so you could buy that separately if you wanted to because it has got the little birds on this print here all over the print which are really pretty um, already down to single figures on this bundle or just this particular one this particular bundle we're already down to single figures so that means if you really want it uh, grab it now while you can and don't forget if you do just have it in the basket and you really want it you do need to check out because somebody else that checks out soon they would get it first sort of thing um, so here's the here's a gray oh this one's so this is the fern this is quite different so it's the fern again that we looked at earlier but it's a mixture of the red and the gray so that really does look quite pretty so again you can actually see can you see the stripe it's got like a little self stripe on it as well so that's a really nice one as well see the stripe can be really useful to cut straight lines <laughs> could help you cut the lines so this is lovely I like this this little splash of red all over so this is our what did you call this one silver was it silver cream and gray cream and gray <laughs> running, running short of names for this and this is this lovely so this again it's kind of that's lovely um, the bigger flower print but this is sort of monochrome so it's a really nice a nice sort of soft very soft grey so this is this would be great to use if you want to add some colour to pop and then this this would help make the colour pop and of course you know we've put them together as a bundle and they do go very well together but you can of course use them separately okay so that's those two bundles let's I, I've got to grab this one because of the paisley 
This, this one we're calling... Oh, we <laughs> oh, haven't got a name yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're going to... I'll tell you what the name is in a minute. Not that it actually really matters. It's, this is an arbitrary name. It doesn't matter. Silver and gold, this is. This is silver and gold. But this is this so silver and gold. So this is um, it's a, it's it's a sort of gun metal grey background. Uh, it's really lovely, and it makes the colours that are coming on the paisley design really pop out and look absolutely stunning. So this is love. I just love a paisley design. It's such a traditional pattern. So this is really nice. Um, so this is in our uh, silver and gold. It's not metallic though. Please don't think it's metallic. But they, yes, for Moda call this gold, uh, which is some sort of, it's a Dijon mustard yellow. So yeah, this is, this is, all these fabrics, I mean, Moda fabrics are known for their beautiful quality and the quality of design and the detail within the design. Um, if you look, you, it's, it's difficult to see obviously on the screen, but I can see it here, the tiny, tiny flowers and floral details within all of the Paisley design. It is really, really beautifully printed, beautifully printed cotton. And the cotton is very soft as well. It's very soft to fill. And this one here, again, it's this lovely little, it's like a little ditzy print. So it's perfect for smaller projects or to add little small details to things with these prints. So this is our, um, gold silver and gold bundle and these these are the, you know they, these these fabrics looking beautiful together look are the sort of thing it's worth having in your stash because when you're doing lots of different projects sometimes you want big bold prints sometimes you want little prints sometimes you want stripes so it's quite good to have a selection so these go beautifully together and it's difficult it's difficult to actually decide sometimes which ones go together, which ones to buy. So this has taken that decision out. You don't have to think about it. However, don't forget you can buy them individually too if you want to. So our last, our last mini bundle, two metres bundle again. This is gold and greys. So <laughs> creative naming from Hannah, this is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the beautiful birds and we have the little flowers and then we have the soft, the soft grey ditzy sort of print and then the lovely flowers. But look at these two. This, this would be, this is a very sort of um, stylish, chic kind of colourway, I think. Oh, turn it around the right way. That is really beautiful, isn't it? It just... Yes, it's, uh, Hannah's going to have it in her kitchen. She said she's going to do all her kitchen stuff in there. Look at this one. And this goes beautifully together with that. So you've got the two. You've got the birds and the flowers picked up on there. And on the, little, on the flower one, you've got the little birds on there. So they go beautifully together. You could lose, use the big bird piece as a nice big piece, as a centrepiece. And then you could have all of this going round. And then... Again, you've got these other two colours to add in. So I'm going to just fold this back up again and then I'll show you all of the bundles again together. So we're going to start with the smaller bundles, the two metre bundles. And then we can have a look at our, we call them the mega bundles, but they're three and a half metre bundles. So let's have a look. I put those like that, I think. Okay, so these, these are all, they're all on the website. If you buy them as a bundle, if I get them into the shot there, buy them as a bundle, they're all £27 and 99p for the bundle for the two meters. So these are our, our different bundles here. Um, I'm not going to remember the colour names. Can you does it matter? We do you want me to sell the colour names again? <laughs> so <laughs> so 
that's called silver and gold. So the one with the lovely grey paisley is silver and gold. That's the silver and gold bundle. Beautiful. Oh, OK, so we're into single numbers for that one. So if you're interested in that one, please grab it while you can. That's that one. Then this one, the big bird in the cream. This is the cream bundle. So we've got the big bird in the cream is our cream bundle. So it's a lovely selection there. Really nice. I think that's my favourite, actually. I think that one is. It's difficult to say because I'm going to then go to one of these ones as well. Um, OK, this is our... Ah, oh, this is our other one, isn't it? The, so that was silver and... This is silver and gold, isn't it, this one? Sorry, I've just changed the order that Hannah was doing it in, so we've got to work out which one's which. <laughs> so, OK, let's, let's look at this. So this one, again, I think this is, a, is another one of my favourites, this one. So this one here has got this lovely big, big print here. I love that. This is silver and white. So this is the silver and white here. So this is lovely. So it's got the two florals, or three florals actually, because you've got the monotone floral as well. So that's really lovely, that one. And then the little, little prints to go with it. That's silver and white. This is cream and grey. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I'm just sort of showing them quite quickly here, but they are on the website, so do have a look at them on the website. Um, lovely, lovely floral again there to pick up and really contrast with some of the monotone ones. And look how well that goes together there. So it's, it's beautiful, really lovely collection. Silver and, no, forgotten the name of it again. <laughs> Cream and grey. And then our last one here is gold and grey. This is gold and grey. So we've got the big bird again. It, it'd be easier for you to see it on the website because the photograph has got the name next to it, so it makes it easier for you to look at. So there are two metre bundles, which are $27.99 each. Um, or, don't forget, you can buy each thing individually. So if you like this bundle, but you also want the birds, you can then buy that as a separate piece to go into your bundle. So that would make it nice. Let's look at the larger bundles. So I'll just pop those to one side. So I'm just going to look at the blue one first. It's about to sell out. It's just, just let me show you it. It's about to sell out. Look at this, it's got the paisley. This is a great bundle actually. It's got all of the, all the favourite pieces. You've got the big birds and the paisley and the big floral and the little cherries, which I think are really gorgeous. And then little flowers to go with that. And some, these are the sort of simpler design, the mon sort of monochrome design here. So that's a really beautiful bundle to, to go. So we are, it is the most popular bundle, which is not surprising. It's a beautiful colour. It's sort of eggshell blue with these lovely pops of colour. So it's really lovely. And that is £48.99 and it's three and a half metres. But don't forget, you can, so it's um, seven pieces, seven half metre pieces. So you can also buy all of those individually at the moment. Look at the blush one again. So this is the blush one. So again, this is a really sweet colourway. It's very soft pink. We've only, we're down to five left of this. Um, it's been very busy. I've just, I, I think it's come from that one, don't worry. <laughs> Every piece has got its own little label and when we put them away at the end of the day, they have to go back in the right bags with the right label, so it's very important we keep those numbers on there. So uh, I've still got a number here, I don't know what that one's for. It wasn't from today, that's from someone else. Um, so anyway, <laughs> look at these, we've got, we've got some lovely colourways again. So. This is the, the lovely sort of all over and uh, it's, just, it's just beautiful, pretty, pretty blush pink. And then we've got the flowers with the little birds. I haven't got the big bird design in this one, um, but you can bring it in from one of the others if you want. There's no blush big bird, so. but look, we've got the other. 
Yes, the cream big bow does work. Let me grab that one. So if you want this blush bundle, which is three and a half meters, you could buy this half meter um, and then you'd have four, four meters. But that does go as well. It does go with these ones if you want the big bird. It brings that in and you've got you have got the little birds on this one. So they would it would go very nicely together. I've taken this off. They keep coming off on my fingers. Got another label off. <laughs> you make me find the right label. Oh, it just keeps coming off on my fingers. I just have to keep pushing it down. <laughs> Okay, let's look at the dark blue one. I don't want to touch them. <laughs> so this is this is the dark blue. Yes, it's only us. It's look, look, you can't blame me for this. Look, look, look at that label. It's just hanging off. <laughs> you don't have to worry about labels at home, by the way. This is just so that we can put the samples back into stock properly. Um, so they have to all be labelled. But uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about this at home. So here we've got this lovely, um, this is, it. I like I like this. I like this, it's like, uh, it's, I mean, I keep calling it monochrome because it's like one colour on one colour. Um, but this one is a, a dark blue. So it's really lovely. Can add some depth to the fabric when you have this. It's just that really lovely print. Um, so that's gorgeous. So we're down to three, did you say? Just three, you've got three packs. What about um, individually? Oh, we, so we do, if, if we run out of the packs, you can actually um, buy the pieces individually if we run out of packs. So if you're interested in the pack, please go for it because again, we've only got three left. So that's called Morning Glory, that one on its own. Morning Glory Evening. <laughs> Ah, OK, so the flowers are morning glory, but it's an evening because it's a darker blue. I thought that was a little bit of confusion. Um, the paisley again in this one. This is beautiful. So it's got a sort of real depth to the design there. It's really beautiful. So now what I want to do is I'm now going to say, OK, if you if you grab the bundle, brilliant, go for it. You've got your bundle. But if you don't want the bundle, if you actually want to mix and match yourself, let's do some of that. So what we're going to do to start with is Big Bird. So I've got the Big Bird. Is it just three Big Birds? Where's my fourth Big Bird? Here he is. Here he is. So that's the four big birds. So you've, you've got, this isn't a bundle, this is an individual piece. So you can choose, I mean, I, yes, I wouldn't put four big birds together, but you can choose one of these to add with one of the other bundles, or you can create your own bundle. And you can put your big birds with the little birds, for instance. So you could put those two together. So this is the blue big bird. Let's have a quick look at this. This is the first time we've seen this design today and half the stock's already gone. This is a beautiful one. It's a, such a lovely soft blue. So this is our first one of our big birds. And then um, if you prefer the cream. I like the cream actually because I think this this will go with so many of the other colourways. I like this one because I think th this this goes with so much. It really does. It's a really beautiful one. I love the design. I think you could you know you could really do something nice. I mean even even something as simple as a cushion cover would look beautiful with that. And I, I would fussy cut it so that I'd have that as a centerpiece. Um, and then the, the backs can be made from the sides and you can make an envelope back cushion really, really quickly. And you could use bias binding to do mock piping around the edge. And I say that because we've got some packs of bias binding later. So, um, and we've actually, I know we've got one which is a ready color 
and I think we've got a cream one. And a pack of bias binding is always handy to have, but you can use it, you can use it to make piping um, or you can just use it as mock piping. So it's really handy. Oh, right. OK, so we've got a lot of people that are messaging about the quilts that are behind me. The, these are ones I made earlier. No, they're not actually. I just whipped, I just whipped them up. No, that, I think, I don't, I wouldn't say she whipped them up, but Susie made these and she's brought them in. So we'll be, this is Liberty Prints and we're going to be talking Liberty Prints in the next hour. So do, don't worry, they will be coming. But in the meantime, oh, we don't, yes, we don't have patterns for those designs. The, this was what um, Susie has done to showcase the fabrics in the ranges. I think this one is, what's it, it's not round the world, is it? It's, um, well, oh, we'll, we'll tell you, we'll tell you at, uh, at, when we come in at nine. Oh, Adventures in the Sky, that's right. This is why she's done these stuff. Look, Adventures in the Sky, look, we've got a hot air balloon and rockets and all sorts going on. So let's look at these ones again. So this is the grey. This is called Silver. I keep opening them up the wrong way. So it's really beautiful, silver. So again, it's got the birds and it's a nice soft, it's a nice, I would say it's a, like it's a really soft grey. So it's very pretty grey and that would look lovely. It'd make a, it would make, as I say, it would make all sorts of things. I mean, you could, you could make a, a dress out of this. You could make lounging pyjamas. It's lovely soft cotton for lounging pyjamas. Um, so that was absolutely beautiful and then our final big bird I mean, we're calling it a big bird but kind of that's wrong isn't it because that's connotations of that big yellow bird but so this is bird song evening on navy is its real name <laughs> not big bird <laughs> big bird is just our shorthand for it so this is this is six ninety nine for a half a metre piece, so that works out at uh, fourteen pound for a metre, and it's which is really good, lovely, good quality fabric, forty five inches wide, so it's a nice, nice width of fabric, uh, a beautiful design as well. So that's that's the big birds. Let's go paisley, if you fancy the paisleys. So. Am I going to be able to remember where this one went? Oh, I haven't got to worry about putting it back now. There's that paisley. There's that paisley. And there's one on the navy. So we've got three three options of the paisley. So this this is this would definitely make lovely PJs. Um, it would make a lovely summer night uh, dressing gown. Um, a shirt. I can see John in one of these and his lovely colourful shirts. So this is really pretty. Or, you know, it's, it's great for smaller projects too. You could make really nice bags out of this. Cascade Evening on Navy is its proper name. Don't you see that? It's a really beautiful, it's very intricate design. It's got the tiniest little petals on the leaves here it really is absolutely gorgeous it, it has that sort of depth to it because of the depth of color in the printing it's lovely really pretty so this is the navy one and then we have it in this this is the blue so that's the blue one so again it's a real, I, mean, I, th I think this, this is Cascade Dewdrop. <laughs> I think some of these names are quite, this is, isn't this, like, I love, I think I love this one. Best. It's very difficult, I, oh, I love this one the best, love this one the best, and then you open another one. This is beautiful, I love this, I do. I love, I think the colours really pop out of this one, uh, so it's really lovely. So that's the, that's the blue one. Ah, oh, so Hannah, Hannah can see a backpack 
made with this as the lining and the inside that would it make, make that would make a lovely lining in a jacket too actually because sometimes you don't want to line with shiny fabric you know you want to line with something something like a paisley would be lovely make it really um, extravagant looking and then this is the grey I don't know what colour we call this but I'd say it's grey so it's cascade on silver so <laughs> <laughs> Emma says she, she doesn't like the fancy name. She likes the simpler names. So yes, this is it's, it's beautiful. Again, but the, because the background colours work so well with these, the design is actually sort of really kind of popping out of that. I think that's beautiful. So that's good paisley. Paisley's a, another one of those things. It's great to have in your stash when you suddenly want something a little luxurious for your linings or even as an accent on something quite plain. That would look lovely. You know our, um, our early bird dill, that would pick up on here. It's, that's sort of like a ecru creamy colour and it would really pick up that there. So they would go really well together. So that's our paisley prints. But I think, I think we should, oh, I like the cherries. Let's look at the cherries. Where have we got cherries? Have we got many cherries? We have got. Uh, yes, we've got them in the blue. There, we've got three cherry designs. I like these. I think these are really lovely. And it's, it's, um, it's a sort of mid print, really. It's not a tiny print, but it is quite small. So you can cut this. You can use this for smaller projects quite easily. And it will still, you still have that lovely print. But it really, it really is beautiful. You don't, you don't, you, you can definitely, I mean, I, I could see a dress made out of this or a shirt or a top. I mean, I kind of think dress making all the time, but also, again, you can use it with cushion covers. And I think you could do, you could use that as the borders for one of the prints like that. So that would go really nicely together. So you could have that as the print in the middle and then you could have that as board around the outside it would look lovely or a double-sided cushion where one side is something like this and the other side is the floral so you can just there's so much you can do with these <laughs> so Hannah's Hannah's got a pot of coffee in her head and the idea of a kitchen diner with all these beautiful fresh colours. She's, she's, got, she's got a beautiful view over the countryside. This, uh, this isn't necessarily reality. I think this is just going on in her head here. <laughs> um, so <laughs> this is if you so if you like so you like this the idea of this print, but you prefer deeper colours. Look at this one. It just makes it look so different as well, actually. This is really pretty. And you know, you don't have to put them together, but they do go quite well together. Because I think sometimes, you know, if you put the designs together, it can actually look quite, so it's the same design and it can actually look quite good. I think that can look really, really good. You could, you could do some really good, but if you did like half square triangles um, using those two colours, that would be really lovely. Oh yes, in our tools we've got this um, thin ruler which I'd never seen before. Hannah explained its use for it. It's a half square triangle ruler. Um, I'll show it to you in our tool hour because it's quite a nifty little device actually. And half square triangles for, um, for quilters, they're a breeze. But for those of you new to quilting or you know it's not your main passion, uh, it's a really wonderful thing because you can do so all sorts of designs with half square triangles and you can do pinwheel and you can do flying geese and there's all sorts of things you can create when you've got your half square triangles so I like them so that is our cherries that's our three lots of cherries oh and blush yes this is the blush one this is the blush So it's, it's a very, very sort of, it's almost a dusky pink, I would say. It's a very soft pink. But again, the, because of the, the beautiful combination of the background with the print on the top here, it, it's, it just makes those colours pop right out. 
It's beautiful. No, I this is I guess Hannah's just said, is this too big a print for a little girl's dress? And I would say not. I mean not baby, but a toddler. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I've got two numbers on here. Oh, I've got three got three numbers on this one. <laughs> I'm gonna put all three on the top here. Somehow we've got three numbers on that one. <laughs> Oh, doing me. Um, okay. So we've got a few more minutes here just to let you know, um, you know, me going through each and every one is quite difficult because there's so many here. They are all on the web. They're on the web in collections. They're on the web individually. So you can, you can make your own collection. Um, that's not a problem at all. You can decide which ones go together. Um, if you wanted to mix and match, I mean, we've got... Some of the gold ones, for instance, you might want to put all the golds together. You, might, you could add that one to that would go really well. So you can you can make your own collection. Um, the the two if you do them individually, they're six ninety nine a piece, I think. Yeah, six ninety nine a piece, which is a half a meter, um, forty four inches wide, one hundred and twelve centimeters wide. So. You can make your own little collections up like this. I've just put those two together, those four together. Just remember that Big Bird, sorry, <laughs> you know, it's called Birds, Cascade Bird Song on something or other. But the one with, one with the Big Bird that we've looked at um, already, they, we, we're expecting those to sell out quite quickly. So if you are interested in these, they are going really, really fast. So do have a look at those. Don't forget there are... What was it, four colourways of that one? There's four colourways of that. So have a look at which one you think um, suits or, you know, go for more than one if you want to. Um. Ah, yes, let's look at the one, this one, because this one... Okay, let's look. I'm going to look at this one. This is the 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 teal, the uh, blue. So if you look at it now, Hannah's just told me that there's some detail here. One of the little birds is catching something. One of the little birds is catching a dragonfly in its beak. I can't see that one, but there is also and that might be that one. But there's also a butterfly. There's a butterfly there. It's a detail. It's the detail is gorgeous. Oh yes, here is the one with the but. Here's the one with the dragonfly in his beak. Can you see? The bird. The de the detail on this bird. Are you, oh, you can't see where my finger is. Uh, the detail on this bird is really, really, really beautiful. You can see absolutely everything on the back. There's, there's my finger. Can you see? And there he's, he's catching a dragonfly. And the, de the detail on the back is beautiful. And then you've got little butterflies as well amongst the birds. The proportions are slightly odd. <laughs> this huge butterfly compared to the bird. <laughs> but it's beautiful. <laughs> as is an Amazonian butterfly, yes. But I just love the design and all the different flowers. Lots and lots of little flowers all over it. <laughs> So that is the that's the blue. So this is this lovely one, and it goes beautifully with the big bird ones, and also um, obviously on its own it works really well. But it also works well with the florals because it has the same sort of floral designs that go together as well. So com you can combine these. I mean, those two look lovely together. You've got the birds all over this and then you've got the flowers on that one so that looks really well together this is so this is called Avery on white so it's the same same designs we just looked at and you can see again it's got all the, all the lovely detail in here the but the detail on the birds with the wings and the beaks and everything is really lovely so this one is on white. So it's a, it's an off white. It's um, it's a very soft white. So it's really pretty. 
and that would look lovely and the colours just they just really sing out I think they're beautiful it, I mean they just you can combine any of these and put this little design with it look so they do really work together beautifully this one has got little flowers all over it so this is a little ditzy print so it's good for small details small pieces and then you've got the birds on here which if you wanted to team this with the big bird piece or indeed planes so let these pe these lovely patterns do the talking and then combine them with some plain fabric which makes them really pop out so this is the navy <laughs> so this here is the navy version and again you know the, the print is just popping out of there it's beautiful with all the birds and all the detail or oh, this one you can see the dragonfly more easily actually not that i necessarily want to see the poor dragonfly being caught but uh, this bird has got the dragonfly he's going to get away it's all right, it's going to get away because the bird's going to cheep. He's going to go cheep, cheep, and then the dragonfly will fly off. They're just, yeah, yeah, they're just in, intimate chatting. They're not social distancing. But you've got birds, birds and butterflies again, and it's all the colours on it. It's beautifully printed. Got a chance to look at one more piece. Which one shall we go for? Oh yes, let's look at the last little Avery. This is Avery on silver. So again, it's that lovely print. That's really, really pretty and the colours are just coming out at you again. I, I love the um, sort of the constant. It's a very, it's a red, but it's a very soft, it's a lot of coral red. It's a soft red, but it's so it's very pretty and everything is just really bouncing off of that print looking beautiful so don't forget um, if you've got things in your basket do check out uh, make sure that you that you keep the things that you've got in your basket and don't lose them to somebody else who checks out before you um, after the break we have got more fabric um, this is it, it is it's a, it's a fabric day today it is, really is a fabric day although we've got the tall one in the middle of all that which you ooh, I'm looking forward to that that's like me being in a sweetie shop being in a haberdashery um, load, surrounded by hubby is like sweeties for me unfortunately you can't eat them but uh, we've so we've got Liberty in just a minute with Susie and she is she's so knowledgeable about Liberty fabrics and she's going to be telling us about the different free collections that we've got um, and some little history on Liberty itself and she's got a little make so she's going to do a demo as well so stay tuned and we will be back after the break Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making. Oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new. And I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it. And you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace the Queen's Garden Party for some work that I did with Marie Curie and I was so so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you so see you again soon bye bye
Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So, number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual. Always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. We'll see you soon. like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page 
While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Hi, welcome back. This is our Liberty Print Hour and we have got the lovely Susie Duncan with us who is going to tell us all about the Liberty Prints on the three collections that we've got. Now we've got three collections today. We've, oh, we've got, <laughs> I'm start this end then. We've got English Garden, which is here. This is the English Garden collection, which is really beautiful. We've got cottage garden which is this one this is a massive collection here which is really lovely and we've also got adventures in the sky and i'm going to go through this particular one before we go over to susie because this is really already selling well now all these are on the website um, you can see them all individually all individual pieces and they're all half meter we we won't be able to go through every single one, but if you go onto the website and you have a look, you'll see a little, uh, little pr print of each one and all the details. Now, this is the one that's been used in the quilts that are now behind Susie. Um, this is a really, really lovely print. And don't forget, this is Liberty. So Liberty has that prestige name, but also their prints are printed onto superb cottons. So this is a really lovely, this is such a, a powerful print. So that's called My Little Star. This one's called My Little Star, Susie's just told me. So there it is. So that is £7.49 for that half metre piece. OK, so we've already um, got less than 20 metres, so that is going to go fast. Now, this is, this is a lovely coordinating one. This is like a little basket weave. That's Saturn's Path. And it's called Saturn's Path. Saturn's Path. Saturn's Path. Saturn's yep. Path. Um, so that's a really nice coordinating one that will go really well. Don't forget half a metre each time. So that's... Oh, label, these labels are coming off in my hands, and I'm getting into trouble about that. And this one, so this is another, this is a little print. This, this is really cute. Yeah, that's Treasures in the Sky. So you've this, got is, lots of this is Treasures in the Sky. Look at this. So Susie's going to tell us much more detail about these fabrics when she's doing her demo. But if you just look at this, this is so cute. This would be, I hate to be, I hate to be sexist here, but this is such a lovely little design for a little boy, isn't it? Or anyone that likes space. Or anyone that likes space, <laughs> yes. Yes, that's, 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 that's much more politically correct. I just, uh, being a bit traditionalist, I just think this is really lovely. It's got little spacemen. It's, it's got all sorts going yeah, on. Yeah, there's it's a really little rainbow beautiful. in there as well somewhere. Oh, there's a rainbow somewhere. Yeah, if you look, I've just seen it. I don't know if I can find the rainbow on yeah, here. Yeah, every so But often yeah, it's, it's really rainbow. beautiful. It's got some lovely little mm. designs in here. It's cute. Very cute. We're just going, I don't, we don't want to, to um, miss out on all the information that Susie's going to give us and the demo that she's going to show. So I'm flashing through these. So, you got so here this one is, oh, it's Rockets. Yeah, Rocket Dance. This is called Rocket Dance. This is, these are nicer names than I had earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, rock, I just love the feel of this fabric though. It's so beautiful. It's lovely and soft. Mm. So this, is, this has got little Rockets dancing all over the clouds. They're all over the place here. Absolutely beautiful, really sweet little little print. So this is the Adventures in the Sky collection. Ah, okay guys, um, Hannah's just told me that there's more in baskets than there is available of this particular print. So that means that if you want it, check out because otherwise um, you might lose out. So please be aware of that. 
This one here is called Cosmic Scatter. Cos Cosmic Scatter. So that's lovely, isn't it? That's really nice. So look at the way that colour jumps out at you. Um, it's really sweet and different. And it's, it's nice and all over print, so that will go beautifully in small projects, borders, etc. So that's really lovely. And then the last one in this particular collection that we have here is Nebulae. Nebulae. Bit of a mouthful. So this <laughs> one, this one is Little Stars. If I can get the other end of it. I actually use that for quite a few Christmas things. Do you? Mm. So Susie, yeah, so Susie uses it. Yeah, it is. It's great for Christmas things. I mean, this would actually make a lovely Christmas cloth. It would, J yes, just a very absolutely. Just Christmas cloth, yeah. isn't it? And well, you'd I, never know well, when you spilt ones. things, would you? <laughs> <laughs> See, I made a cloth a years ago and I actually had another contrast one. It's like a big um, ribbon across it. Yes. And then I made pockets for each of the people to put the Perfect. napkins in. Perfect, yes. Um, but this is, yeah, this is lovely. And all of these are available individually and all the other pieces from the other collections are also already on the website. But we wanted to show these... And then we're going to go to Susie, because this, this, this selection, this uh, Adventure in the Sky, is limited availability. But go to Susie and let's hear a little bit more about Liberty and these beautiful fabrics. Susie, over to you. <laughs> well, as you've already said, they are stunning. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for having me back. <laughs> um, yes, beautiful collections. They're some of the older collections from Liberty but they are still beautiful collections. They work within themselves in a colour palette, but also across the colour palettes as well. Yes, you can I agree. pick up across, especially the two floral collections, the Cottage Garden and the English Garden. Those would combine. In fact, that's what I've done with um, a piece that we're going to look at in a minute um, and with some of the samples. They, they're just iconic. They do capture a garden. In they my do head. definitely. Yes. yes. I mean, the English garden is is totally designed around those co those gardens um, around Buckinghamshire where um, Arthur Lazenby went for his weekends away from the Liberty store, and it it's got all the little bluebells, the tiny little um, cosmos flowers in the designs with the the sort of solids of the, sh the silhouette leaf trails as well and then in the cottage garden it's just the iconic English rose garden yeah just beautiful prints and because they're screen printed you've got that depth of color so when you're working with them and they are pieces of home decor like your cushion covers or any of your you know, pin cushions that you might make, tea cozies, whatever it is you're going to make with them. Even if you have to wash them, that depth of colour remains. And yeah, it, you know, your quilts look as good on day 3064 as they do on day one when you've made them. Beautiful to work with. See, this, this to me, is, it's, it's quite a modern looking one, this one. It is. And those colours, I mean, don't they just shout some of oh, the orange yes. and yellows? Yeah, they are beautiful. Beautiful. But the great thing, uh, the thing I really love about all of the Liberty prints is the, the print detail is fine enough for you to be able to English paper piece as well. Yes. Or a plique piece or foundation piece. Whatever it is you're wanting to do, you can cut small, you can fussy yes. cut as well, which yeah. is lovely if you're trying to make detailed um, icons within your quilts all at home decor projects. It, so think, so what it, what's your relationship with Liberty? Um, Apart from loving it, obviously. Uh, yeah, obviously <laughs> loving it, yes. Um, well, I've been very, very fortunate to be able to launch the newer ranges on um, the uh, sewing channel for Liberty um, on their behalf. And then um, subsequently, here I am with their older ranges as well. So it's just a, a relationship w that has grown purely out of the, I was asked to present the Liberty show. And then, you yeah, know, it's just no So have you, have you been sort of working with them for years? No, 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 no. Oh, no. right, so you're so Relatively quite new, but then you've this. just kind of like really got yourself into yes, immersed yeah. into well, it. Yeah, well, I love history and the Liberty building has always been the most iconic um, building in London that I have always loved. 
I loved going there as a child, visiting it, especially around um, Christmas time with their window displays. And I, I, it's one of those buildings that when you walk into, you just go, <sighs> Yes, I know what you mean, Because actually, it's yes. just incredible, the it's, detail yeah. in the woodwork. Um, and we're all busy, busy, busy people. And we're like, I always think of us like little ants everywhere. But w whenever you go into that, the, into the Liberty store, as you walk in, there's just this sense of calm and all that modern rush has gone. Everybody's quite surreal and it's all calm. The displays are just unbelievable. It is. It is amazing. It's but I think experience. it all goes back to the sort of quality that is Liberty. Yes. And you can normally tell a Liberty print just by looking at it because of the depth of colour, um, yes. because of the quality of the fabric that it's printed onto. Yes. Um, and in fact, I've actually now got some jersey fabric. I've got Liberty jersey fabric. Yes, they have was, started yeah. to spread. And it's beautiful. And it, and it just it's yeah. has that same cotton look to it, but it's actually a jersey. Yes. Well, the other thing that I love is the fact that all of the prints are developed from the archives that they have. So they're... All, they all have a historic connection either with the store or the family or yeah. a part of the, the store's history. And they've redrawn those. They're, I mean, the artists that work there are just so talented. Yeah. And they've given us a fresh look within a collection that all co to go together, telling that story about that collection. But pull back from which is nice I mean you, they've had, looking yeah. at this design here it, although it's obviously a, like a lit, really little old thatched house it looks like a modern design yes so that is so you're saying really they're taking the designs from before but giving them a bit of a modern twist, modern twist to them yeah which makes it really lovely yeah this, isn't I mean, this beautiful I love this, this I is love really Cottage sweet. Lane it's, it's so cute yeah but absolutely brilliant I know I don't know if the camera can pick up but I used faux or this pick it off, used, just grab yeah, it off the shelf it yeah. and show so what i was saying is about being able to fussy cut using that little cottage as Can my you tip center, it up, upwards. center that's it if you tip it upwards around. the camera above you will get it yeah are we there oh We're yeah good. so you fussy yeah. cut the little cottage so you can have the little cottage in the center and then i've used it as it was used as the backing and then picked out the florals and it just makes it look like you've entered one of those gardens with all the flower wildflowers it looks around. beautiful yeah i love i just love the fact that you can fussy cut like that and a, a fabric that in essence doesn't look as if it's going to work for anything other than the backing suddenly becomes a picture it does and so we've only got seven meters or less than seven meters of this one left uh this particular one so um Oh, let's let's have another one. Um, I'm going to go for this one here, actually, because this, this is this vine. is this is different. I think this looks very different to what you normally expect. Yes, yes. Um, because normally I think of Liberty as all over prints. Yes, you know. Yes, um, but there's quite there's quite a lot of different. solid coming through there. Yes, which means I think it would make a good solid for a quilt because although yeah. there's the odd floral Turn element. It it gives you that pop of colour, that rich yes, coral colour. I do, colour. it's lovely. It's really It's a lovely, gorgeous, it's a really lovely me, pink. But and then as you, you say, with the pop of the, the yeah. fabrics coming out here, yeah. which are really sweet. So yeah, I think that's that's a bit different. I like that. Very nice. Yeah, and it's you've got it in the blue as well, which is the darker, sort of, I would say, French navy rather than a true navy. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I think it's sort yeah. of a French navy. It's got a slight green hint to the blue. But again, the f but I think the flowers pop more on the blue version than yes, they do on the I coral. Yes, I think you find that sometimes with a darker background yes. like that. It does. It's lovely. But again, you could the get away with that out. as a solid piece. Or if, you, if you've if you got, um, within your quilt design, if you've got a big air, um, square that you know is part of the design or a big rectangle, then those would be ideal because they're just not going to be a, a complete just, solid. Yes, exactly. You've got that interest of colour and you've got enough colours within the print to pick out other colours to complement yeah, as well you around have. You've got your lot, design. You've lots of colours in here, yes. which is really lovely. So they've got the blush pink that we were looking at yes. earlier and a sort of coral red and green yeah. and a light blue and a teal blue. So there's lots of colours, as you say, that you can pick out. Yes. But of course, as you mentioned earlier, they all go well together and you can actually mix 
the yes. collections. You, you don't have to stay within one collection. Absolutely not, no. No, I, um, I mix and match all the time, <laughs> <laughs> or if I'm allowed. Um, the other thing with those ones, I think, is they're great for borders because they've yes. got that element of interest as well. So you're not just putting a, a flat um, colour round them. You've got that little bit of detail that takes your eye to the border as well because borders sometimes, I feel they're... It can be a bit boring. Yeah, and missed. Yes. You know, people are concentrating they're, they're so much. Something. Now this, you know, what we're, when we think of liberty, we tend to think um, traditionally of Tarnay lawn. Yes. Which is a very fine, very, very fine yes. lawn. This is not that fine, this no, cotton. No, this is Lazenby cotton. Right, so it's, it's actually um, a more of a medium weight, isn't it? It's it not is, too yes. light. So it, it's still 100% cotton, but it has been specifically designed, and it's Liberty's own design. Um, formulation it's not anybody else's okay so it is totally formulated by liberty printed for liberty screen printed for liberty um and it is a slightly heavier weight than the tarn lawn yeah i've made kimonos from it so it still can be used for dressmaking yes definitely um but uh, you won't get the same uh, flounce and flow that you would if you you know if you make a shift dress it would hold its shape yes. more. Yeah, it has got, it's got the weight to hold its shape. Absolutely. But it would still look good in an A-line dress. Absolutely, yes, would. And you it would, can it would make And it would pleat and gather definitely. beautifully. And but actually, I, I think mean, it's a better weight than Tarn Lawn. Am I allowed to say that? Because... It's a, it's a different way. Tarn Lawn, I think, makes fantastic shirts. Yes. And flowy skirt dresses. But I like the weight. I like a bit of weight on yes. it. Yes. So I think I think this is lovely, and this is nice classic print. Oh, that yeah, that's Emily Silhouette. I think that's absolutely beautiful. That particular design. It's I know it's got a lot. It looks quite busy because there's a lot of little flowers dotted yes. onto it, but actually made up, it's stunning, and the colour can come through depending on what you've got round it. Yeah, exactly. But that would make an absolutely beautiful summer dress. Yes. It would definitely, yes. and I love the colours. And I love being the colour 100 cotton, if you were ever allowed to travel, <laughs> <laughs> or we had a summer like we had last year, then you've got yeah. the coolness of cotton as well. And I just love the. I mean, I just like work, working with natural fibres anyway. But beautiful. It is. That's a really, you, really I think lovely. you have that in two, don't you? Two colours. You've got it in the red it's and the and in the blue. Blue. Which is, is I love the blue. Look at the blue. That is beautiful as well. Again, this is sort of, to me, this is a very traditional looking yes. colourway. I think it is an iconic liberty. It is, isn't it? Definitely. Definitely. You'd know that. So that is really liberty. beautiful. Yeah. And it, they just go really well together as well. As you were saying, you can pick, you can pick things out from different yeah. collections and they still look good together. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that they've all got print detail. They all work yes. because the colour palette yeah. is uniform. Yeah, it's great. I mean, Make that's sure I put them back into the right collections. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We won't tell anyone. No one will notice. <laughs> OK, yeah. so we're, we've got three collections. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the collection as itself? And so what's the history behind the collection? Yeah, so the, the one furthest from me, which is the one you're at now, I believe. Is it that one? Yeah, this is the no. English. Yeah, that's this is the English that's garden. That's the English garden. So that one is the one that is developed to look like an iconic, you know, rose garden with all those um, flowers that you see surrounding it. There's beautiful, it's height of summer colors. So you've got the corals, you've got that delphinium blue, You've got the richer greens than you see in spring when they're more limey. Um, and you've got the small detail prints because a lot of our summer fabrics have got that small print detail as well, haven't they? Yes. Look at this. See, this, this to me just says Liberty. Yes. It has this yeah. little tiny print here. And this is really useful. I mean, it's a great print, as you were saying earlier, when you've got like little tiny all over prints, you can use it for fine detail. Yes. You can cut into it, you can cut the tiniest pieces. I don't know if you've ever been to the Festival of Quilts and there's yes. a miniature quilt yes. display. I love that. How anybody has the time and patience oh, no, to you cut see, that's these my tiny thing. pieces. I love that. They love are that. amazing. Yeah. But you can use these sort of prints yes. because you won't lose, you know, won't, it won't disappear because they're also such tiny prints. But they're great so, for um, 
home pieces like little pin cushions yes. and tiny little elements. Or if you want to make flower embellishments, you've still got lots of colour yeah, going lots on. Lots of colour going on Absolutely. and you can still see the print on yes. the fabric. Yeah, that's what these yeah. are particularly good for, these small prints. Yeah. That's really lovely. So this but is again, one of the ones from the English garden. As well. Yeah, make borders a bit more interesting. Yeah. Or a waistband on a skirt, so that looks a bit more interesting than a plain waistband. Yes, or a yeah. band round the base of it, yeah, a around dress, the hemline, or round your collars. Yeah. So if you did plackets and things, absolutely. Or we're talking about bias binding. You, know, yes. you can make bias binding oh, out of these. Oh, that would look really good. And it would be, it'd be stunning, wouldn't it? Well, be because different. you can pick all the colours out yes. in the rest of the quilt design, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. So Let's have um, another look. Ironically, at that one. print is called Newland Large, and it's got to be the smallest print <laughs> I think I've ever seen. <laughs> so, do we know why? It's called I have no idea. But might, I, so I don't know is, of any flowers. This is a simpler. Um, I'm sorry, it's all creased, by the way, because it's obviously yeah, sorry, been folded and unfolded out on everything. and folded again and again. Yeah. Um, but so, this is a really lovely one as well. So this is quite a simple one. So I think this, go and it goes beautifully with all the florals and things. Yes. Because because it's simple, it can accent the others. Oh, you've used it as I've a lining. I've used it as a lining bag. in this, ba uh, in this bucket box. lining, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Well, again, because it's a soft and there's no handles, I can just turn it over so you can see the lining. But it is beautiful, yeah, floral dot. Isn't that lovely? So this is the English Garden Collection. Yeah. Um, which is sort of the height of summer. Think, think, think lovely, balmy summer yeah. days yeah. with hot sun. English roses. Yeah, not the drizzle we've got at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's, it's a time to buy because we can get away from the drizzle. So, yeah. <laughs> Susie's just saying about get away from that drizzle that we've got at the moment. We don't want the drizzle of the day. Yeah. Where did I get? I got this one. Yeah, that oh. was in there. Uh, was it? I don't did I get that from the wrong no, place? No, you're on this, you're the one in the middle. You're in the collection I'm in the middle. This, I'm That's in the middle. It. That's because yeah. I've moved the collection. I you just, have. And we've got cottage. So that, that was the English garden. Yeah. And we've also got cottage. Now, cottage garden's got a lovely big collection. So we've got the prints we were looking at earlier, the little single prints. We've got the little cottage. We've got the traditional one there. But let's grab, can I get, can I get all of those? So have we, got, have we got a nice story behind Cottage Garden? Well, Cottage Garden was based on the, co the gardens, <laughs> the cottage gardens, um, around Arthur Lazenby's retreat, Buckinghamshire retre retreat. So he's taken those typical, you know when you go to a quintessential Cotswolds garden area, it just looks like it's come out of some <laughs> old movie, <laughs> doesn't it? Being ignorant, who's Arthur Lazenby? I, Arthur Lazenby is the founder of Liberty. Oh, right, okay. Yes, so it was all his dreams. Because I just assumed he was, it would be Mr. Mr. Liberty. Liberty. No, it's not. <laughs> like it's Mr. Selfish. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, he was ju Arthur Lazenby li Liberty, so that's where it's all come from. But they named the cotton for quilting after him, which was the Lazenby cotton. Oh. Um, but yes, he was the founder. And he, I mean, he did lots of travelling um, in the late 1800s and early 1900s and brought back lots of ideas of prints and colours, those rich colours and that's where all the the carvings and the, the floral elements within the store have come from and it's from those that all of these print designs have been developed and are still being developed because all the archives are kept there and there's just thousands of references that they've got um, it must be just a dream to go into yes, and look absolutely. around I yeah. mean what a I worked in Liberties um, well I wasn't working for Liberties I was at I can't even remember which company I was working for at the time but I was working in Liberties for a week doing demonstrations oh, and wow. things in the fabric department yes and uh, I didn't earn a penny that week no because every time I had a break, yes, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to wander far. You've got to have a look around. Oh, I've got to have, just got to have it, got to have yeah, it. Exactly. But, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it they was, are it was beautiful. Lovely. Yes. These are so again. This is this. So this is part of the cottage garden. Now this one, it, there's um, four colourways of this. Yes, so these Daisy are good Shadow. sort of additional 
yes. prints, so sort of, you know, for your borders, but as, as you were saying, sort of slightly more interesting than a plain fabric. Yes. Because it's got an all over print. Yes, so but it still works as a solid. Blush pink or um, coral, a soft blue and a cream. Yes, sorry, I've taken a chunk out of the cream. <laughs> so don't, these are all available by the half metre. And if you want multiple, you buy multiples of half metre. And then you would get them as a piece. So if you wanted to buy a metre, you'd buy two units and you'd get a metre, not two, two little half metres. Which means that you can use them for dressmaking or yeah. um, bigger projects that require more than half a metre. Or quilt backing. If you order yes. a, a, a sizeable piece, then you've got enough for, you've got enough a, a for quilt, quilt back. backing. Because yeah. they make beautiful quilt backs and even self-binding quilts. Yes. You yes, know, just yeah, make I quite it a like bigger. I quite like that technique. It's one of the first first quilts I made. I think I did that. I made the backing bigger, yes, and then brought it over to the front to yes. make the binding. Yeah, and mitered the corners. Yes, I like that technique. Um, I think it's quite nice. Yes, and it's it's because uh, because if you're lazy and don't like to do a lot of hand sewing, <laughs> it's a way of getting around that. You don't have to do the hand sewing. Yeah, you just got a lot of pressing to do though, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got quite a few questions coming in. Um, okay. Right, so we've, we've, we've got a lot of questions asking about the quilts behind you. Yes. So we're not demoing them. These no. are just to, to showcase the fabrics. Absolutely. And I'm afraid we don't have the patterns for them today either no. although Susie is going to see if she can find them yes. and I have to accept I have to apologize because I thought you'd made them no but it was they were made no. by they were made by um, an American company uh, the oh I've forgotten the name let me look on the label for you the whimsical workshop whimsical workshop we so must give them credit for yes that because they so are the beautiful and I wouldn't like to take that absolutely away so they them. were made for the launch of Adventures in the Sky for Liberty by Whimsical Workshop. Um, they are uh, pieced appliqued quilts. So you, you make the body of the quilt with the borders and then these pieces are appliqued on. Okay. So they're pieced pieces. Um, but it's they're just stunning. I just love they are them. So they really do show the fabrics yeah. beautifully, don't yeah. they? And they're made to quilt Cot, uh, cot quilt size yeah so they'll fit on a junior bed or a, a quilt but I think they're just too nice I think they're nice I think, wall I, mean, I, think that I was going to say they make nice wall hangings absolutely as well, actually. yeah yeah I mean this in a little yeah. nursery or a playroom would be absolutely stunning I actually be. think it'd be really good in a, in a classroom as well well, it could be cause because it could you've be a got learning lots thing, of elements it? to yeah, talk about. Absolutely. So, so I do apologise um, to you out, out there, ladies and gentlemen, that we can't offer you those patterns. They are really there to showcase the fabrics. Give you just it's just for inspiration, really. It is, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we try to bring lots of different inspiration: home decor. Have yes, exactly. I think, I think this is what we need sometimes. This is why it's nice to have the books as well that yes. we, we put on the show. Um, because sometimes you want this fabric or you have this fabric, if you're like me, you have quite a lot of fabric at home. And sometimes it's the inspiration, what am I going to do with it? Yes. So it's quite nice to have that. So we have got some books later, which we will share with you. Yep. Um, but I know you've got, you're going to make something, aren't you? Yes, I thought, make for yeah, I thought we'd do a, a quick make. Let me I like the my... idea of this make that you mentioned because I think it's really pertinent at the moment. Yes, isn't it just? <laughs> so what I thought I would do is make one of these for us. So this is just a little, um, um, we've all seen these, especially in the stately home gift shops, where you can put your little packet of tissues or wet wipes or whatever it is you mm. want to put in there. But um, I found that it also, well, the size I've made, will also fit my mask. Yes. So I have this in my handbag. I actually have one in the car door as well. So it's got a mask, packet of wet wipes, tissues, and it's good to go. But it looks really pretty. 
and it just takes two bits of fabric yeah. and I, I mean I think it's a brilliant idea because you know we're all wearing masks now as we should but yes. also you know you should keep them in something in your bag yes oh um, yes you don't want to shove it or shove shoving it, it in a pocket yeah or exactly so that's quite a nice wearing idea. it around your chin um, sure and you're going to show us how quick and easy that is it to make. is so quick and easy so i managed to find some ribbon as well yeah. i didn't realize I so got you some. if you buy half a meter um, of two different <laughs> color ways you could have it but you would you'd be able to make quite a few as gifts wouldn't you out of oh absolutely so the thing you need to do is decide what it is you're going to put in there and then I'll just undo this one so I can show you. So this is just a packet of wet wipes. And what you want is choose which of your fabrics is going to be on the outside. You don't have to line it. You can just use one bit of fabric. But I, by lining it, it instantly gives me, I can instantly give myself a border rather than have to put a binding on there. Yes. Or you can use bias binding on this edge if you wanted to. It's entirely your choice. But I, what I want to make sure is that I've got about half an inch either side of the end of whatever it is I'm putting in and that these just about meet when they're wrapped round. So it's so double no, the width. So no extra selvage on Not that. on that one because then I'm lining this so I want the, the lining fabric to be about a two inch crossover which gives me... Two inch crossover. I've given a two inch. So an inch either side. Yeah. Okay. Because that... I'm going to double hem it right. to give me myself my faux, faux binding. And all you do is lay your fabrics right sides together. I'm just going to give that a quick press. So I'm just going to flick my mat. That's why I love these cut and press mats because you've got everything that you need in front of you. So I love those little mats and irons actually. Um, yeah. They are on the website, aren't they? I keep saying that, but I these, haven't got around yeah. to buying one of those. They're really useful. So all I did was line my fabrics together. So they're both cut to, um, what did I do? So the I height did. is the same, was half yeah. an inch bigger. So the lining is seven and a half long. They're both six and a half wide. And the top fabric is six and a half long. So I've got an inch difference on this occasion. So whatever you've got left over, you don't have to be super accurate, but basically what you're going to do is double hem. So you are press it so that it's just short of the top fabric. And I'm going to do this completely cack-handed. <laughs> and, and you try and do it so people can see exactly what you're doing. Exactly, you do. Yeah, you end up working back to front and inside out, don't you? Or burning your fingers. <laughs> So that's just doing a double hem. So double hem over there and I'm actually going to just pop a quick clip into place just to hold it. Because although it's pressed, I just like to and hold it I think it it's a place. good idea. Or you can pin it as well. So I'm going to do the same the other side. Just roll over. So welcome. We've got a lot of new customers coming in today, which is really lovely to hear. Um, perhaps it's because of the Liberty name. You've heard of it before, of course. Yeah. Who hasn't? Exactly. Uh, unless you live under a rock, you might not have heard it. But this is a fabulous opportunity, not only to get some Liberty fabric, because you know it can get expensive when you buy Liberty fabrics, but these are a great price. You can get lots of half metre pieces. So you've got Liberty in your products in your projects um, and of course yeah what about making a face covering yeah um, absolutely. you could make you could make a lot of those in these these are really really beautiful we've got to wear them we might as well wear pretty ones might not absolutely we? well i've made one in every fabric so i've got it to match every outfit <laughs> <laughs> I, I've made a lot. I go fact, anywhere. <laughs> I, I came out today in, and I realised as I was driving that I've got a mismatched mask because I have a mask in this fabric as yeah. well. And I have done that, yes. But obviously, retrospectively, I've made them from remnants and not from all of my fabrics. Well, I haven't got remnants necessarily. But So um, then all I've done is taken some ribbon. I'm only going to put two on these rather than the four. Let's go for the middle. So in order to get the ribbon so this would be coming across like that so it makes sense to people i'm sure that everyone like me needs to see it working because the sometimes the origami of fabric 
doesn't make sense no, unless you exactly. see it working. Have you ever put an invisible zip in? That's one. I mean, oh, my yeah. absolute favourite zip. It's so easy, but it's it's really it's getting your head around it. Yes. Yeah. So with the ribbons, the most important thing is that they are opposite each other. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to be tying it up. Now, on the example, I did one either um, sort of two inches in from the ends. But on this one, I'm just going to put one in. Yeah, I think so. so. If you've got a gridded mat, use your gridded mat rather than try and do it by eye. So I'm going to put the ribbons in, Let's fold them over so I can see. Before I sew, top stitch that binding, what I want to do is to put my ribbons in, and I'm just going to move this so I can use the three and a half mark. Just going to tuck it in, I don't know if you can see, just underneath that. Yeah, so you want to hold the end in there when you Absolutely, stitch. Absolutely, yes. Now, make sure it's pushed right down, and I am going to pin this, because I can guarantee that the minute I pick this up, it's going to move. And you want to make sure that it's met that crease, because otherwise, it's going to slip out. Yeah, definitely. We've got these pins that you're using. We've got those on the next the magic, show. Yeah, I hadn't seen them before. Magic pins. Oh, they're amazing. Oh, absolutely love them. They've got that soft grip end. They're re they're nice long pins, sturdy pins, so they'll go through a lot of layers. And they come in this beautiful little case. But not only that, I dropped my entire collection on the floor As in my do. workroom. <laughs> <laughs> panicked like crazy because we have a dog and I thought oh my goodness one of us is going to stand on them they all landed point in wow. so I could see them like little darts absolutely fabulous I Love can't them. guarantee that would happen mind no. you I've got to say well, I've that tried it. I have tried it again accidentally of course um, and it did happen so all so I'm going <laughs> maybe that's why they're magic I know awesome can, can you pass me one? Yeah, absolutely. That's why you're doing that. I'm just going to try and drop it. I'm not going to drop the whole lot. I'm, I'm just going to try. They're sealed, so I can throw Thank them. You. You. Oh, there you go. So all I'm going to do now is take this over to the machine. And if you wanted to do a fancy stitch, you can. I've, on this sample, I did um sort of squirrely-whirly stitch. There's probably a technical name for it, but I call it a squirrely-whirly <laughs> stitch. Um, whatever your favourite stitch is, I'm probably going to just stick with a straight stitch I think on this one uh, okay or should we do a zigzag pin test failed <laughs> oh did it oh did it. you well, obviously I think, well maybe it's because I used to do javelin maybe that was it I think it may, it may be the thickness of the carpet you see this isn't a thick carpet oh uh, no it? you see I have got a if nice you've got plush carpet yeah, um, I did just yeah. sanitize my hands by the way so yes so we can now put those, I can put that pin back in. Right, okay. I, this is the first time I've used this machine, so if I've set this on the wrong stitch, it is a sample. But it's a learning curve, isn't it? So I think I've got it on zigzag. You've got to put the presser foot down. Uh, yeah. Which is always an exciting one. Oh, I have got zigzag. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> It's a, f it's a fabulous machine. It's one we sell, Ow, isn't it? Oh, that's my finger. Is, is it the 680 that you've got there? It is. Hang on. Yeah, it's a beautiful machine, actually. Just make sure you hold that ribbon flat as you do that border. If you're a bit concerned about that, you can always dab a little bit of fabric glue. You know, you get these lovely fabric stick uh, glue sticks. Yes. And that's really good just for holding things like ribbon in place very quickly. Exactly. Before you stitch it. Exactly, over it. yes, you can do that. Um, and then before I stitch the other side, I just double check that my ribbons do meet, just in case I have wiggled as I go. Right, let's do the other side. So if you are making for charity or shows or quick presents, you've forgotten a birthday. In fact, these go flat, so they're great to fit in with a card for a quick birthday gift. Yes, and then you're still, sending, you're still sending it as a letter as opposed to going into small parcels. Yes, yeah. and especially now, because we can't meet up with people, being able to send them a little something is just lovely, isn't yeah, it? And to I be able to so. send them something that's made in Liberty fabric, it, wow. Uh, yes, and if you went and bought a little thing from a gift shop, it would cost a lot more it than it's would. going to cost. In fact... 
it would probably cost more than the half meter I would guess I'm sure you wouldn't get it for 749 oh I very much doubt so so yeah you could you can make quite a few so once you've done that you're gonna turn it um, inside out and you want to match fold your ribbon ends in you're going to have the lining side outwards and you want to fold it so that they meet in the middle so again use your gridded mat or you can what I did was pinch and press yeah that's how I always find the halfway mark fold it in half pin and or then press it. you can now you don't want to go right up to the middle you want to just be a little bit short of the middle because you do want a gap when it comes through just keep your ribbons out the way you could just what pin you, those out yeah the way, you can you? yep and we're going to fold that one in and again I'm going to clip those to hold it and then we're going to change to a straight stitch quarter inch seam just down either side and I believe there's one there there is look at that Don't you love the fact that these machines think for you? I, I do. <laughs> People often sort of say, well, I'm not very computer literate. I don't like the idea of a computerised machine. I promise you, I've got the computer sense of a baked bean. So I know <laughs> what you're coming from. But a computerised machine is just a, a so easy to use. You choose your stitch and it sets the length and the width for you. They usually tell you what foot to put on. Yeah. It'll have a little foot guide on there. Um, it, it shows some sometimes depending on sort of the, the money you're paying it might show you the stitch that you're choosing it, it's so easy and then you can change that so if you're using you know it sets the stitch length for a zigzag but if you want to make it satin stitch that's easy to change but you haven't spoiled it because if you go off that stitch and go back on again it resets to the default setting whereas on a manual machine you have to turn the dials each time till you get it right it's beautiful it is good so um, one They're out of stock at the moment, oh, by the way. I'm just waxing lyrical about something that's out of stock, but we will be getting them back in stock. And it is you know, something that we always get back in. Um, but one thing I would do on these projects, sorry to interrupt you, Wendy, is to just double stitch over the opening bit. Yeah. Because then, because that's the bit that takes the wear and tear, it just means that you're not. So you can just reverse stitch or just it. stitch it again. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And then all you do is, I do tend to just take the tiny bit of corner off that exists. Yeah, just flip the corners at an angle. It is a really tiny amount though, but it does make a difference. And then so you don't bother to neaten it? I don't, no. Because you could do you with could, a zigzag stitch or something, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah, or if you've got an overlocker, I overlock But it. once it's turned through, it's not really going to get wear and tear, is it, in there? No, it isn't. But what I do will do is just push those corners out with whatever you use to turn through, just so you've got a nice edge. And then give it a quick press, avoiding the ribbon, because that will melt. Look at that, so quick and easy. And it looks like you've got binding on those Absolutely. inner edges, doesn't it? And then, yeah, there you go. Isn't Ready that to lovely? use. I think that's gorgeous. Great little pouch. So that's like a, you know, sort of a 10 minute pouch. Yeah. Exactly. And you could make a load of those. And yes, give them and you get loads. A half a metre, you'd be making bucket loads of them. Yes, you really yeah. would. But also, there's lots of other little gift ideas that you can use. Yeah, your I mean, half metre for. I mean, there's loads of things. Absolutely. I mean, you can make loads of little bags like these, cut it into even your scraps. Is this, is just this a bag? Together. Is this, it's not using these particular prints. No, is this, it? so is this, this is using made, Flower this is Show. One I made earlier. Yeah, here's one I made earlier. So this is Flower Show. Um, and can it's you put just. Put it into the centre so we I can, can show. Yeah. So it's got um, a patched band, and this literally was just scraps in a box. So they're all different sizes, just patched as a, oh, a right. ribbon. So you could just use a border, like, yeah. you know, just a one print, but you've yeah. actually done it because you had to, only little bits to play with. Absolutely. And then I just put um, other uh, two bands either side. So you're making a rectangle, whatever size you want, because then you, get, you know, yeah. get whatever bag you want. You want two of them. I've wadded it. And then I did the same with the lining. That was just one piece. 
and then just made them as a, you know a one bag unit and the star one I did out of Adventures in the Sky up here is exactly the same principle yeah just a little box bottom but so let's just uh, adventures in the stars again let's yes. say so let's give a little bit more details about that because that's going really really well so this is this collection here it which is. you've used on your little bag I there. have yes so this has got all the well not all of them it's got nebulae it's got the cosmic scatter the treasures in the sky um what else have we got on there you've got the saturn's path so that's a way, I mean, you can combine using all these little pieces, but you've actually used, because you said you didn't actually have much to work no. with, did you, at the time? No. So you've actually used really small pieces, haven't Absolutely, you? Absolutely, yes. Which is your favourite out of all of these? Out of is all that of the collection? No, the, out of out this Out of this one. It is hard to say. I do like Saturn's Path. That's this one. Which, you were right, it does look like a basket weave. Yeah, it's a basket, I would say that's but a basket But what I like weave. is the fact you've got that two-tone blue, so it works with other things. I can use it as a solid, but then I also really love the um, My Little Star. That one, yes, the one in your hand. This one? Yes. I, I love this one, actually. Although, because this is this is definitely a signature piece, isn't it? This is the one that's it is. Um, yeah. the centrepiece of the but collection, I feel. But it works so well. I mean, you know, as a, as a small, iconic piece or a patch, but as a big piece as yeah. well, it looks amazing. I think I think that's lovely. And the colours in it, that are those... I would I would call the colour palette of this um, a muted vintage blue and yeah, green. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's a sage green, but it's it's almost got that toned down vintage feel to it. It really is. I it, it reminds me of um, the Jules Verne around the world in eighty days. Yes, yes, get you know, that. It, I definitely hence, get that. Yeah, I suppose because of the the uh, quilt with the big yes, hot air balloon that projects but, that in your mind but doesn't just it? the images on these pieces just remind me of that um, not the rocket to the moon I'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not a big rocket to the moon fan but it just looks I think I do I love it I love that one and I well. love this the little one which you've used in your bag yes. there haven't you now that you could make some beautiful accessories for a nursery couldn't you yes, as well definitely. or toy bags so yes. they could keep toy really trucks simple in it. toy bags yeah, yeah. great for car, a, a little drawstring bag for the car so that when they're you know you're on travels if you're allowed children <laughs> can have um, a bag with toys in to amuse them so you don't get that are we my, nearly here yet? <laughs> my my um, oldest son, I'm going to tell you now because he's 26, but he <laughs> used to love putting things in bags. Yes. He and he would, it would drive me crazy because I, I realise I've got a bit of ODC, OCD because I, everything has to go back in its right place. So yes. things like puzzles, I used to put everything back, build building blocks. Yes. But he would mix it all up mm. and he would have a building block and a bit of puzzle and a car. And he just had loads of like bags. He used to carry all these things around. Yeah. And then I used to have to go and separate them. Separate them out. Yeah, well, I was even back worse. Back in the right place. I used to separate them out into alphabetical order. <laughs> oh, God, yes, absolutely. <laughs> alphabetical order. Yeah. The, a, the, the ABC bricks had to be put absolutely. In, in ABC. Or spell their name. <laughs> yes. We, or I, I used to give them a word for the day, and they used to have to make the word for the day to, <laughs> to put the things to bed. But I think all of those adventures in the sky, if you've got a little person that you'll want to make some things for, or a big person who loves space, I think they'll work all ages, yeah. to be honest. They do, actually, because, you know, we're talking about little boys and things, but some of these, you, you know, they're just fun. They, they are. are fun. Yeah. You could make some summer pyjamas yeah. out of something like this yeah. for the man in your life. I mean, they're just because they're just a bit of fun. Exactly. Don't, don't, you know, don't take yourself yeah. so seriously sort of thing. I think they're great. But th they're also... Um, iconic older images of toys and space themed yes. things you know like the the ma the um, astronaut for example I mean is a such a far cry from the astronaut we know now yes his outfit is just it, it is isn't it? <laughs> it's, Look. it's the 1969 or whenever it was landing on the moon outfit isn't it it's it not is. the I'm 2020 not, I'm not sure about astronaut. the train the steam train confuses me yeah, I, well, maybe it's all in line with engineering it's and when like, it was developed. Yeah, it's all of methods of transport and things, isn't yes, it? Because you've yeah. got a whole load of mixture. Well, yeah. There's lots of different things on here. 
I would say it was what the Victorians would say was the typical little boy's toy box. It is. Isn't it? It is, you know, yes. They have a, a bike. Or as you a said, plane. of any gender. Any gender, who yes. Likes, who likes space. Space, <laughs> yeah. Or gadgets. Yes, definitely. It's but it's very cute. Thing. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. But again, all the colours mix and match really well. And then Nebulae with that, that scatter of stars. With yes. the odd blue star in there. It is. So it's not... And the print isn't a, a uniform print. So it, it yes, so it's it nice and easy like to work someone's with, got isn't a load it? of confetti and just thrown it, it over is. and it's scattered. It is, it is really pretty. Well, really I'm going to say, I've got to say thank, thank you ever so Gosh, much, Susie. Are we there? <laughs> I know we are, because I'm going to just say thank you to you. But then Hannah wants me to just go through some of the popular designs. Yes. But we will see you back here at... 11. Well, it's 11, isn't it? I'm yes. Just, I've lost time now. So um, which designs did you want me to look at, Hannah? Ah, oh, well, you wanted to look at this one again. Let me look at this. We're going to just quickly look at the most popular ones. And don't forget, they're all on the website, all of these different fabrics. Um, over, yeah, over half of this availability has gone already. Um, so this is really lovely. This is, this is the all over one with all the little tiny um, figures and toys, really. Different things that you've got on here from cars and stars. And oh, a, there is a little rainbow. I can see a little rainbow shooting star umbrella i mean it's a, it's a really sort of um eclectic mix so there is really good fun it's it's a, it's a learning this is a learning piece of fabric because you can get your child to learn all of these different methods of transport and all these different things rainbow here my my fingers on the right it's upside down that's why it's confusing you but there's the little rainbow can you see <laughs> you needed to see that little rainbow <laughs> So the satin's path. So this this one, this is great because this is a really good this is a good fabric that you can team with other things to make the other fabrics really punch out because it's like a it's a sort of self pattern and I you know it's called satin's path but it, to me it looks like a basket weave. So it is really really pretty and it, because it's so delicate, it will make your colours on your prints really pop out so that's a really good it's a good one to have in the basket that one it's uh, useful for lots of things better than just plain plain i think yes yes so that's really nice and i have the other one i like which is um, the single color actually or oh, it's not actually it's got choice in it but again this is a nice small print but i like the depth of the blue on this cosmic scatter cosmic scatter that's really lovely too it almost looks geometric. It's it's yeah. um, it's got a got a modern feel, which we found we we're saying with some of these. Although they're sort of archival prints, they've got a modern yeah. twist to them. Again, I use that for Christmas projects. Do you? Yeah. Use it for Christmas, yeah, because yeah. of the stars. Because yeah. of the stars. But it's not and limited to that. No, absolutely not. So you no. you know it's that's quite good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's really nice. I like really to nice. find multi-use for my. <laughs> yes, things. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this one. No, that's not. Is that my little star? No, that's Nebula. Isn't it? My little star is the one that's got all the uh, the bottom one. That's it. That this bottom one. Oh, this one. Yeah, that's called my little star. I know it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got, but it it's got that movement within the design, that flow. It has as well. So you've so got like you have. I mean, you have got like shooting stars. Yeah. This is what it is. Look, and then lots of little stars coming from it. Yeah. So, pretty. so uh, when everybody who's got this in their basket checks out, this will be out of stock. I think so. If you do it. want to get it, I would grab it um, whilst you can, because this is really lovely, and it, and I think you know it will go with so much. Make a good John Scott shirt. It think. will make a good. It's hard to say, isn't it? That yeah, good, I know. A good <laughs> I John Scott really <laughs> carefully Good about John that. Scott shirt. We're dis we're I don't know if John watches these when he's not on, but if you do, John, we're dressing you yes. now. We're deciding yes. Just what you want to look good in your shirt. But yeah. look, these two go together as well. This is what I love about it. Yeah. 
the fact that you can put these together yes so beautifully and this is you know this is your but choice how that, you do that it, as you introduce each of the different ones different elements of my little star pop out exactly so when the the cosmic scatter went on you those navy stars came yeah. flooding out they come out and then when you put this one on you've got blues, that trail come through yeah. Yeah. And then add that one. That just makes all of them pop, yes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It, make, it, just, it just looks beautiful. Yeah. So I've, I've got to stop playing with these now because <laughs> we have to move on. It, I have <laughs> to say, it and the fabric's so soft. It is. It's a beautiful, that you do, soft It is fabric. a real strokeable experience. Yes. I know. I am very lucky that I get to do yeah. this. <laughs> I, said, I had this a comment from a friend, actually, who said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm doing this. She said, I, I so miss fabric. I so miss stroking fabric. And I said, oh, but I get to do that. Yeah. I get to do that with it my is. work. But if it, it is lovely. But if it feels nice to work with, you know that your finished product is going to be a nice product. Yeah. And, and it's gonna you know, be, your and quilt is going to be soft and cozy. Your handbag or your, you know, your you just, tea you cozy know, yeah. are going to be nice. You can nice. tell um, yeah. a, a decent fabric Absolutely. by the feel of it. Yes. But at this point, we have to say uh, thank you and goodbye to Liberty Prints for today. Don't forget, they're still on the website. You can still buy them. Uh, we still have a stock of some of them, but they are getting low. We're going into the break now, and then we're coming back into Wendy's Sweetie Shop, which is our haberdashery haven. <laughs> Hi, my name's Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. Okay, I got into sewing through my grandma. I used to sit and watch her. Um, she was a dressmaker and I started off making toys and then I was dressmaking myself and from then I've done homeware and children's wear and all sorts of different things in between. Um, I would say my top tip is to be kind to yourself. It's only fabric at the end of the day, and if things do go wrong, then you've always got your quick on pick. My claim to fame is that in 2012, I was a VIP driver with the Olympics, and I met some really interesting people who were very nice, and I'm hoping that I'll meet some very interesting and nice people on Sewing Street too. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual. Always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. We'll see you soon. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. 
Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Have you heard about Yarn Lane? A TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn. Bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hi, welcome back. This is the haberdashery hour. So everything on the table here is under £15. We've got an amazing selection. Not, not the whole lot under £15. Individual prices. So let's delve in. We've, now, I'm going to start with scissors because you do need to have good quality dressmaking shears. Um, absolutely essential. We've got a whole load of choices here. So you can choose which suits you. Um, am I better off putting them up the other way? Okay. Sold out. So this, this is honestly, this is what we need to do. So here we have these different scissors. Um, now these are the ones that I like to use personally. These are the side bent ones. So basically what happens with these is when you're cutting out, you can keep fat. Oh, sorry, they've gone as well. So we're, we're getting, these are flying out, so we're getting messages as, as, we're, um, as we're working from. All right, then. I'm not the only one that likes these, obviously, then. OK, um, I'll put that back together in a minute. Can I go for these, these ones? OK, right. My little collection here, are they all all right? Good. 
<laughs> so here we have these ones. So again, they've got that side bent. They've got the sort of straight edge with the handle. Um, so that means that when you're cutting out, your hand is kept flat on the table, which are really good. These are nine inch. When you've got your dressmaking shears, can I please recommend that you keep them for dressmaking only? Don't let somebody cut the bacon or use them to cut paper or anything else. These are your perfect dressmaking scissors. This I like. Now, what is this? This is the Millwood pack. Ah, oh, right. This is an absolute bargain because this should not be in our collection of under £15. But what Hannah has done is we had this as an early bird offer before and she's kept that price in. So you are getting this as a real deal. This has got a lovely pair of shears, little pair of embroidery scissors, some pins. I'm not sure if they're glass head or plastic. They're probably plastic head, but they've got bobble pins and a little thimble. But it's a really lovely set as well. So that is a really lovely set. Should be more than £15. And is that eleven ninety nine? Eleven ninety nine for this set. So th this is absolutely gorgeous. It makes a great gift, but it's good for you too. It's really good. Having new scissors. I'm going to put that to one side. You've seen that. This one I showed you just now, and then we've also got this is a classic. So what we what we need to do. These are left handed. Now that does make a difference. Um, my son is left handed, and I realised how hard it was for him to cut with right handed scissors when I tried to cut with my left hand. These fit, they're moulded, the handles are moulded and because they're moulded they fit the hand nicely. So if you're a South Paw, you want to have left-handed scissors. So he has his own pair of scissors now which makes it a lot easier to cut with. They're really good. These are £14.99. So that's lovely left-handed scissors. Now something you must have, you should have at home, pinking shears. These are great. Pink and shears are fabulous for neatening the raw edges of cotton fabrics, felt, things like that. You don't, you don't have to neaten it by machine stitching. You can do it with pink and shears. It's also a really, you can cut out with pink and shears as well. Um, and if you cut around like neck edges and things when you're sewing garments, cut and pink and shears, it saves having to cut little notches out. So pink and shears are something that you definitely want in your basket. $14.99. If I, I can't take them out because it's, it's clipped in, but you can just see the pinking shears along here. So you've got serrated blade, basically, and when you cut, you get a little zigzaggy edge rather than a straight edge, so absolutely lovely. It does, it stops, it stops, I mean, the point is it stops fabric fraying, so it's a way of neatening the edge of the fabric. I have got two pairs of scissors here, um, this is a four inch embroidery scissor. So this again, this is a scissor you should have in your sewing box and it's something you need to replace um, as well because obviously they can, they can't, oh what's, okay so the, the difference is one of them has got a curved edge and one of them has got a straight edge. So this is the straight one first. So this is lovely, bulk standard pair of scissors. Um, I should be able to get it out easily enough if I just no, it doesn't want to come out. You know, normally I can sort of get them out without too much difficulty. Yeah, here it is, out the side. Here we are, look. Very, very, they're very small, very, very sharp. <laughs> Just ask to go to the left, and so which is my left? Very, very sharp points, so that is really good. So obviously to cut your embroidery threads, they're embroidery scissors, but they're also very good for cutting into small, delicate little areas. Very sharp, small, pointy blades. So this, this is one I looked at earlier, so I'll move that out of the way. So these, really, really good. So these are good. These are $12.99. Very, very, very sharp. They're very good for um, delicate work, getting into tiny little bits, little corners and things. Uh, the label on the packet? Ah, oh, yes, here. That's as KAI, that's the brand. So they're actually by Janome. Um, so, 
Yeah, so the, the Kai is a Japanese brand and they make the blades and they are well known for very good quality sharp blades. So they're, they're high, they, these are high quality. I have Janome scissors, they're brilliant. Um, and then, so that's the straight one. This is the curve. Now this, this is useful. Um, I don't know how easy that is to see, but rather than have a flat edge, the edge curves, it's curving up. So that is good to get really close to your threads on the fabric without the possibility of cutting the fabric at the same time. So that's why you have curved blade scissors are brilliant. I, I prefer curved blade, but there's nothing wrong with having both. If I get the other ones out, you can just see I have both types because sometimes I want to use a flat and sometimes a curve. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, So there's, I don't know how easy that is to see, but the, there's a curve on the top one. This one's got a curve on the end. And it just means you can get that bit closer. So it is really good. It's good to cut your thread tails really, really close to the fabric without having to take them through to the back of the work. As long as you've locked them off, you can cut them really close. So they're, they're really handy. Definitely recommend those. $12.99. Perfect little pair of scissors to have in your box. And as I say, they do, you know, they will blunt over time, like any blade does. So get yourself a new pair. $12.99, really fabulous. Good scissors make, the, make it so much difference to your work. They really do. Okay, so that's scissors. Rotary blades. Let's look at the rotary blades. I know we've got a rotary blade somewhere. Oh. Ah, okay, so um, it seems a bit uh, you know, obscure to suddenly bring in one packet of blades, but the reason is they are they've been out of stock and they're now back in stock. There's eight eight ninety-nine for three. There's three three blades in here and they're in a little plastic container. Um, so what it means is that you can replace the blade on your rotary cutter without having to go to the expense of buying a new rotary cutter. And it is something you do need to replace. If you start finding that, you know, cutting your two or three layers of fabric just isn't, isn't cutting easily and um, neatly first run through, it's because your blade is blunt. So you just replace the blade. So it's really handy, again, handy to have um, in your box because there's nothing worse when you're in the middle of a project cutting out and suddenly finding the blade's not working properly. So it's, it's one of those things that will, you'll find useful. Um, it's eight, $8.99. <laughs> that screen is a little bit far away from me to see those prices. $8.99 and you get three blades in there. So that'll keep you going. Um, and you don't, if, you, if your rotary, blatt, if your rotary, rotary blade is not sharp, actually, as I know, because mine isn't at the moment and I need a new blade, it can get very, very frustrating because you cut and then it's not cut properly. And if you're trying to do um, really precision cutting and when you try and cut it again, sometimes it can be a little tiny bit out. So very useful to have, definitely. And back in stock as well. So it's something, uh, something to have, it's something to get and put into your stock. Even if you've got a spare blade, these packs at this special price, I would get them because it's really useful. Um, I'm going to look at pins. I've got two different, oh, I've got three different type of pins. What's the difference between this one and this one then? Oh, these are fine. These are fine patchwork pins. Okay. So this, these are flower head pins. Now these flower head pins, I've got some here. Let me grab them. In this, I've finally got this dish on here as well. This is a magnetic dish. We're selling this today. So these flower head pins, they've got a flat flower head for those that don't know about these. These are often used by quilters. A lovely long pin. Uh, so you go through lots of layers and they're flat flower heads. You must be careful not to iron that head though because it can melt because it's plastic. But 
They are fabulous pins. They're pins that I use all the time. I have a selection of pins in my pot. I have different pins for different reasons. So flower pot pins are on the website, so you can see them. And then we've got these things called magic pins. If we just look at the blue one, I don't know if that label's supposed to be on it. I don't think it probably is. <laughs> Um, so these are the blue ones. So these are, these are called quilting pins. They're one and three quarter inches long. And uh, I'll take those out of right. Right, so these are the blue ones here that I'm looking at. Let's just push those out of the way to make it clearer. These were the ones that Susie was using earlier on. And they've got like a little spiral end to them. I should have kept her pins with me, shouldn't I? I'm going to I'm going to have a quick look at this one because I want to show you these because they are different. I like different. I know it's crazy, isn't it? I get excited about different bits of haberdashery. I like the fact that they come in their own little caddy. They, they, I can't say, uh, Susie said that she dropped hers by mistake and they all landed point down. They didn't on this carpet here, so I can't guarantee that. I did try. But what they, what they would do if you drop it on the floor is it'd be very visible because you've got the big blue twirly head. And because they've got that nice twirly head, it's easy to pull out when you're sewing as well and push in. So, and they've nice long pins. These are one and three quarter inches, uh, which is 48 millimetres long. You get 50 in a pack, in this nice little pack here. Um, and the best thing is when you iron over them by mistake, they don't melt. <laughs> so that's really good news. You're not going to get little blue blobs all over your fabric. Please note that we, are, we have more in baskets than we have available. So if you do want these, check out and then come back. So these are quilting pins and they are 9 99 for a pack, 50 in a pack. They're quite fine but not as fine as these ones. So these are exactly the same company. They've got the comfort grip, heat resistant little um, handle, and also the <laughs> designer storage case. It's called a designer storage case. There we are. Um, these are one and seven eighths, so they're not quite as long. So these are patchwork pins. So the quilting pins are longer. Um, these aren't as long. These are only 36 millimetres or 1 and 7 sixteenths. That's quite a mouthful. Still, still 50 pins in the pack and these are fine pins. So they'll be uh, finer, so you know, less layers when you're patchworking this, when you're quilting. Always good to have different types of pins. So again, 9.99 a pack. Really, really useful. Um, definitely think about these if you're into patchwork and quilting. The two different types. And I like the fact they've got different colour heads as well. So you know, if you, if you mix them up, you know that these ones are for... It, does, it doesn't matter. You could use your quilting ones for patchwork and your patchwork ones for quilting. And you could use either of them for dressmaking. It's not that they have to have sole use only. But it is quite handy that they've got different colour heads. Because also, you can use that when you're marking openings and things. You could use blue from openings, etc. So these are fabulous. Put those to one side. And as I've got that, this is a magnetic dish. This is rose gold, super strong hold, magnetic dish. And you, you do get a couple of little pins in it. Oh, only three. But um, I'm just, see, I hadn't done this before, but I'm just testing it. Look, it's super hold. So it's really good. And if you drop a pin, does it pick it up? Yes, it does. I didn't try that before either. So that's really good. So this is quite handy. And the base has got a it's rubberized base there, so it'll stay nice and st sturdy next to your machine. And it's pretty because it's rose gold, so it's pretty. I like that. That's really nice. But it does mean that, yeah, it does mean that as you're sewing and you've got your pins at right angle, you can pin them out and just sort of drop them because it's going to hit the magnet and that'll stay where they are. So that's really good. So I like that. That's nice. Put that one down there. But, okay, just one at a time. We've got a little dog. 
with a little kerchief. Can I, can I take him out of this box? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. This is cute, look. I'd, I'm not sure sticking pins is a particularly nice idea. He's got, I love his little kerchief that he's got on. <laughs> he, seems a, he seems a bit too cute to put pins in, really. <laughs> so, but they do go in nicely. So you can, you can put the pins in. Nice, li nice little, that's, really, that's just a nice little gift. So what's that one? $14.99 for that little pin cushion. They are, they're very fashionable, aren't they, having little sausage dogs? But it makes quite a cute little gift. I actually just quite like the thought of having him on the shelf, to be honest. Forget putting pins in him. I think he's quite cute. <laughs> so Hannah says, living next door to a real sausage dog, this one's better because it doesn't poo, it's quieter, and doesn't need to be taken for walks. Look at this little sheep, look. Oh. We had this we had this little sheep on the show last week when I was here with Delphine. It's just so delightful, it really is. With his little glasses on. <laughs> I think it's so cute. Uh, and it's and it's really lovely and soft and it's easy to pop pins in. So Oh <laughs> Hannah says this is her as a sheep. <laughs> I didn't see that at all. I wouldn't say that at all. No, 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 no. Um, now, this is quite handy. I've used one of these before. I don't know if I can get into this one. Um, so I'm going on to the next one. I've gone off. Oh, Ooh. No, I don't think I can. Oh, so these, these come in random colours. You won't necessarily get this colour. I, I think mine is pink, but you also get like there's a lime... Uh, blue and yellow. So you, you, you don't know what colour you'll get. They all sort of come in a box. I can't, can I open it? I can't get in there. Mm. Have you got one open there? Is that what you're finding me? We're trying to get into the box. Okay, but whilst we can't get into the box, shall I move on to something else in our short brief time? I mentioned this ruler. But this is really handy, by the way. So if you, th this, this um, wrist thing, what you can do, you, you snap it onto your wrist so it fits any size wrist. So you just snap it onto your wrist. When I say snap it, it's got like a long band and when you kind of like hit it, it kind of curls round. Um, and it's a magnetic dish. So you can put it on your wrist and as you take the pins out, you just pop them onto the magnetic dish and it holds them. So it's really handy. Um, can't get in there at the moment, but... All right, so Bex, Bex likes to wear it, so she might have the one that's open. So this, this is the ruler I mentioned earlier when we were talking about uh, the half square triangles. So basically you would put this onto your square of fabric and you can mark the centre line through the grooves in the centre here and then you mark your quarter inch away either side. And what you do is you have two, half, two, tri two squares of fabric face to face Mark diagonally across the centre using that. Mark either side by a quarter inch. So on the quarter inch marks, cut up the centre and then you've got two sets of half square triangles. So it's really, really simple. It's such a simple patchwork technique and then you can use those in different combinations to create different patterns. So it's really quick and easy patchwork for beginners. So it's a very handy little ruler, which is 14.99. For this little ruler so it's quite handy don't don't be tempted to use it with a rotary cutter though it's not for that this is for marking so it's quite handy I'll put, yeah patchwork is definitely about precision so let's look at the other rulers we've got rulers this oh got to do the creative grid one first so let's do the smaller ruler first Let's push this out. This is a creative gift. So this is this is a nice handy size to take to classes. This slips into a bag. Um, it is the most one of the most popular size, which I'm not surprised actually. It's a creative gift, which is a very well known name in 
acrylic rulers. Um, it's got lovely markings on it, very, very clear markings on it. Six and a half times 12 and a half inches. So it's, a, as I say, a really good size to take with you to classes and workshops. The other thing I like about it on this one, it's got non-slip grips on the back of it, which you, well, you can't see them particularly clearly because of the plastic on here, but you can just see around the edges, it's darker and you can see, in fact, I can actually feel it through the plastic. Um, does not damage your fabric. It just sits on your fabric and then when you put your hand on the ruler, it sits more uh, firmly in place as you're using a rotary cutter against it. It won't suddenly shift. Um, it's shifting on here because I've got, it's got the cellophane on it still. Uh, but this, so this is in inches, so it's six and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. All the inches are very clearly marked and the half inch you can see. And the fact you've got all of these other lines, it's, it's really easy to line up fabric with your rotary cutter and your mat and get everything really precision cut. And to have a, um, a quality ruler like this for under £15, it, it's just under £14.99, and it is one of our most popular rulers. So this is, this is one to have. Oh, and there's, on, there's only 10 in the whole company at the moment. We will probably get more in stock at another time. Um, but at the moment, if you're keen and interested, this is a really good one. This is great. So, the oh, rulers, rulers last, they should last. And if you're using good quality rulers, then they shouldn't be a problem at all. Now this one is R. Now I've pulled this one forward first. This, this is a Janome one. Um, it's this is the it says imperial designer template but it's got cent centimeters uh, i think it might be in the wrong bag that's why that's fine uh, <laughs> just cover that over <laughs> so this this is the metric so this is centimeters here so this is this is useful because uh, more and more dressmakers are getting into using rotary cutters and rulers and metric tends to be more uh, for dressmakers because quilters are still using inches. Although some of the overseas patterns, some French patterns, um, they will be metric, so it's quite useful. It's quite useful to have both measurements, to be honest with you. Um, sometimes I will work in metric, sometimes I will work in inches. So they're clear so you can see underneath. The point of having a clear ruler is that you can see the fabric underneath you can see how you're lining it up. You can see the edges properly. You've got all of these lines on here to help you line up your fabric to make sure you're precision cutting it. They don't, this, this one doesn't have the built-in, I don't think, I've not heard of built-in grips on any other rulers. So that creative grid one has that, uh, which is really handy. But this is, what I like about this one is the fact it is nice and long. And I say nice and long because I don't know how long it is. Okay, it's 24 and a half inches, 60 centimetres long. This is a centimetre one, so a lovely long ruler. Um, it does also have some of the angles that you often need in quilting and things, or even, in fact, in dressmaking, you might need to cut things at 45, 60 degrees, and it has those lines as well. Old bag makers as well, yes. You want to work in metric for bag making. So that's a really good one. So this is a metric one and it's $12.99. It, yeah, it is very difficult to get hold of a metric one. So that's quite handy to have. So this one, flip it over. This is inches this time. So this is, this is a more traditional quilters ruler in inches. It's a nice, uh, acrylic so it's a nice thick acrylic and the reason you use an acrylic ruler uh, when you're doing quilting and using a rotary cutter is if you just try to use a regular ruler you would end up cutting edges of the plastic off so you need, do need quality acrylic quilting rulers so again very clear 24 by 6 inches so it's, it is a nice nice long one to do longer cuts with your bigger cutting mats um, Imperial measurements, inches, and again, you have the angles here if you need to do any bias cutting. So, very handy. <laughs> okay, 
little tip there. So if you get half a metre of fabric and you fold it in half, before you, and you need to cut off the selvage before you start working with it, you tend to cut the selvages off because the selvages are bound a bit tighter than the rest of the fabric. So you cut them off to make sure that the fabric works properly all across the whole width. Um, and you can, do, you can do just, I mean, you can do a whole selvage by folding it in half and using this once. It's a really good length one to have at home. So I mean, this is what I have at home. I have a nice long one like this, but I also have the Creative Grids smaller one, which I can take to classes and workshops. So that's handy to have. So again, it's 12 99 and this is the Imperial version. OK, now I know this sells well, so I want to bring I want to bring both of these in. OK, so I'm going to bring both in and then put one to one side. So what we have here is wash away quilters tape and quilters tape. And there is a difference. So just put that one to one side for a second. This is the one that a lot of people will think they're getting when they buy the other one. So just be aware. So this is a wash away one. And this means that you can use it and leave it in and it'll wash away. It's double sided as well. And that's the bit is the key is it's double sided, which means you can hold seams together. So you could put a zip in. You could you could rather than pin a zip in, you could use double tape to put your zip in position and then sew it and then it will wash away in the wash. Uh, you can use it to put seams together if you're working with leathers and things like that and plastics that you don't want to put pins into, you can use this. It is a, I think it's a quarter inch still. Um, well actually no, it's slightly wider I think. It's eight millimetres wide. So it's eight millimetres wide, so it's slightly wider than a quarter inch. That makes it, uh, oh I can't see. It's something, I think it's five sixteenths, or does it five sixteenths? That's a funny measurement, isn't it? Yeah. See, this is when I go from imperial to metric. To, so this is eight millimetres wide, five sixteenths. Um, and it's double sided and there's 10 metres or 11 yards on there in the roll. So it's very good. So this is um, the one that disappears and you can use it to hold seams together, to hold zips in position, to hold ribbons if you're, if you're going to put ribbon trims on the top of something, anything like that. This is really, really handy. This one, on the other hand, this is not as expensive but it's got a different use. It is only single sided. So it, you, it's not, you, you can't sort of put it your zip in position with it unless you're taping it sort of sideways kind of thing. Um, you have to take it out because it's not, it doesn't sort of wash out. It's only got a light adhesive. It's, it's sort of for temporary hold. But if you wanted to sort of mark uh, stitching lines, you can use this quilter's tape. It's very useful. This one is quarter of an inch. And you get 30 yards in here. So it's 30 yards on here. You can use it. It's a bit like masking tape in, con, in um, sort of construction. So it's quite good as well to use it. You can mark your uh, stitching line on your throat plate. You know how difficult it can be to see the um, different seam allowances on your throat plate. You can use it to do that. So you can use it for different things, um, marking out grids, holding things in place temporarily on the surface. Um, this is what it's for, but it's quarter inch wide. So if you put it on the edge of your fabric, you know when you stitch on the right hand side of that, it's a quarter of an inch from the edge. So it's quite good. It's quite a good way of sort of keeping your seams absolutely straight. Um, it's a nice little gift to have for somebody if you're putting together a box. What is this? 199. 199 so it, this is definitely a little add-on add this for somebody to put in their box so it's really handy okay I've got to, I've got to go to this because this is something that I use a lot okay so I I use this this is beeswax um, it comes in this nice little container at the top of it I don't know you can't really see that can I bend that back at the top of it it's got sort of little ridges and what you do is you thread up your hand sewing needle with thread and then you pull it through the plastic, uh, through the um, ridges there so that it gets a little bit of wax on it and it prevents your threads from tangling when you're hand stitching. 
So it's a really useful thing to have. It does make hand stitching. You know how when you, you get so far along, you've done some hand stitch, slip stitching and open and close or something, and suddenly your thread knots. So you virtually have to start again because if you try and cut off the, the knot, it's going to unravel. So this will help prevent that. It's really handy. 249 um, keeps your threads from tangling, so beeswax. And it's all in, in this nice little case inside there, so it keeps it all together. Very handy. You don't want to get waxy fingers. So that's really good. So let's have a... Oh. Ah, yes, yes. So the double-sided quilters tape, which is one we were looking at earlier on, this one. So this is the wash-away double-sided one. Really handy to use with PVCs. Now, when I was on here before, we had a make... So, so we don't know where it is though. But anyway, using PV, this, this one is, I don't, can you see that? Let me move that one out of the way. It's glittery. It's glittery. It's 2 dollars for half a metre. So it's a really good way of trying working with something like this. 2 dollars for half a metre. You can't iron it. But what you can do is you can use it for bag making. You could, if you were making some kind of purse with see-through pockets, a uh, cosmetic bag, there's all sorts of things to use it. So to get the creases out, a hairdryer, just you're heating it very slightly, not right on it, um, just heating it slightly to get the creases out. Because obviously it will come folded in order to get it into a package. Uh, so this is it's really nice. So this one is it's glittery. It's got a glittery finish to it. So that's really nice. So you could add something, add this to, um, you know, as I say, a wash bag, a cosmetic bag, something that you want to wash and wipe, or combine it with fabric. And you just use a regular sharps needle. Um, so we've got, yeah, we've got uni unicorns and hummingbirds, look. Well, I'm going the wrong way there. I should go that way, shouldn't I? Uh, that's been the next hour. That's when we uh, see Susie back again. So this is, uh, same again, half a metre, this is clear. So if you don't if you don't want to be glitzy, you can just have clear, clear PVC. Two ninety nine for half a meter. You can. Oh yes, you can multi buy units. So if you buy, if you wanted if you wanted a lot, um, you can buy sort of multi of units, and then it will come as a bigger piece. So that's really handy. It's good to have because it's there's lots of projects you might want to use this. If you were making something maybe like a kneeling mat for the garden. Um, and you want to have a nice fabric on the top, but this is on the bottom. So it's lots of different things. It's, it's, quite, um, it's quite a sturdy plastic as well. Uh, so yes, it's uh, very good for sewing. That's a good one. Uh, yes, you can get multiple. So if you want that, you can get multiple units. Now, th another thing I'm going to grab. This. This this is a stabiliser set. This is for machine embroidery. Um, or actually, you know, you can use it when you're doing a plique or anything that's got concentrated stitch stitching. Basically, what this is, is a pack of different types of stabilisers. So a stabiliser is a base a fabric you put on the underside or on top of your uh, work to stabilise it when you're stitching. So it's to prevent it from stretching or if you're doing concentrated stitching, it's stent it from um, crumpling up and uh, gathering too much because of too much stitching and what it has in here it has different types so you you try these out you see which ones you like best and then you can buy more um, in the piece so it has tear away wash away and cut away so let me uh, the wash away you have to be careful with wash away. I'm going to have to take it out from the top you have to be careful with wash away because if you sneeze too much you can it can disappear. <laughs> um, let's take it off nice and neatly so it can go back again. It's got staples in it. So it's also got a handy booklet inside. So if you're sort of new to using stabilisers, this is quite a handy little pack to have because it gives you an idea of what you should buy, what's useful for what. 
Um, if you wanted to do things like um, soluble sewing, where you do concentrated stitching, you can create bowls and things. So you do concentrated stitching, maybe you know circular like that, on onto the wash away one, and then you wash it away, but not completely, and then you can mould the bowl, and you've got these beautiful 3D bowls. So there's all sorts of things you can do with stabilisers, and what's handy is this little book in here. It not only does it give you advice on how to use it, but it gives you, you know, what to use when. So it's very, very handy. Um, and then each of the pieces tells you what they are. So you've got little labels on them. So you can actually work out which ones to use. So you have tear away. So tear away is the traditional one that you will have heard of before, probably. And you literally put it on the back. And then once you've sewn, you tear it away, quite literally. But you can end up with like little tiny bits left behind. So it might be sometimes you think, no, I don't want to tear away one. I would like something that washes away. So that's when you go for a wash away one. And you can usually fill. So this is, this is a, a, a soluble one all labelled and don't forget your instruction booklet comes with a description and this is one that you can use when you want to wash it away completely equally yes yeah, so one, once you've oh and I should have said actually because this is an incredibly well known um, company with these so um, which names now escapes me Madeira um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're well known for their threads. You'll know Madeira threads very well. And uh, so this is really good quality stuff. And as I say, you've got the wash away ones, but look, you've got different ones. You've got a very lightweight one. You've got a heavy one. And you can, you can buy them in a roll once you've decided which one you like, but they'd be between 12 and 25 pounds for a roll. This gives you the chance to try the ones you find most useful. Um, so they've got the different types, and as I say, it also it tells you what they're for in that booklet. So very, very handy. If you're stitching on, um, like toweling, for instance, then what you would want to do is you'd put a soft soluble on the top so that when you've finished the stitching, you wash that off and the stitching hasn't sunk into the towel. So it's very good. We've got a price comparison. We've looked at this. Um, so... Uh, well-known shopping company at the moment, fifteen ninety-five for this very same pack, and we're selling it at ten ninety-nine. So we 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 always encourage you to look elsewhere. Don't assume that we've got it right, but um, we like to we like it. We prove we have. So. <laughs> yeah, not that we're competitive or anything. <laughs> so yeah, this is really great. So this is um, a lovely set to have. It's one something fun I've actually had. Uh, in the past so I like that that's really good sewing machine bag I love sewing machine bags this is a sewing machine bag and look at this lovely color this is great actually this is useful it's I mean it's a sewing machine bag and the idea of the sewing machine bag is that you can fit a standard sewing machine standard size sewing machine inside um, it zips all the way down the sides so it's easy to lift in and out in there we're going to be wowed by this price 12.99 for a sewing machine that is a really really good price i've seen these bags in shops for about 30 quid so that is amazing um, nice pocket on the front which means you can put your uh, your feet or your um, pedal and your lead in there. It will fit in the main body as well, so you could also put your haberdashery or your project in there. So it's a nice handy bag on the front. So for our machines, our Elna machines, it fits the 550, 560 and 570. Um, the dimensions of the bag are length 46, Height 30 centimetres, this is, and width 20 centimetres. So if you think about your machine, and you know, remember that if you've got your machine in here, you don't have to put the hard case on it as well. Because that hard case can be quite weighty. So it's quite good to, this, this will protect it. Um, and it's got the nice handles as well with the additional 
padding here on the actual bit that you're holding so it makes it easier and on the bottom it has got feet to keep it off the ground so when you take it out to the car and the ground is wet you can put it down while you open the boot and put it in but you know this is a sewing machine bag but actually it's a good project bag it's a great bag to put your, your projects in, um, your fabrics. It can be a fabric stash bag. So there's always a good use for a bag like this. I could actually do with another one. I might have to nip off and buy one myself. I like the red as well. It's a lovely red bag. So this is brilliant. So this is a sewing machine bag. Don't miss this. I've got to talk about this because we talk about this so often. The 505. This is the temporary spray which is very handy for holding quilt layers together, positioning a plique on, um, anything that you want to sort of hold in place before you stitch it, 505. So again, it's one of those things it's good to have in your kit at home. So I would suggest this. Really very useful. Comes, um, this is a, what's the size of the tin? 250 mil. Okay, so um, I'm just being told here that we can send this to you at no extra cost because some places charge extra for sending aerosol, but we can pop this into your, part, your package. So this is quite good. Really useful to have. As I say, it's one of those things that it's good to have in your store. Even if you think, I'm, I can't imagine using it at the moment, you will find a use for it once you've got it. So what next? Well, we haven't got long left, but I want to mention some of these things here. Quilting gloves. Um, so again, if you're, if you're new into quilting and indeed machine embroidery, free motion, these are brilliant because they've got little, they've got little grippy pieces on the, each of the fingers which will help you manoeuvre the fabric. So free motion is when you decide where the fabric is going to go. So you've lowered the feed dogs, the grippy teeth on the machine, so that the fabric isn't being fed anymore. So the fabric will stay exactly where it is until you move it. And then when you move it, you can move it in any direction at all. So having these grippy gloves on, these are cotton gloves with grips on, you can move it around easily without it getting sticky and difficult to move, because sometimes it can be slippy and not easy to move. So these are really, really handy. So these are a pair, obviously, and they are medium to large. So <laughs> they don't, you're not just getting one, you've got to do everything one hand is. You get a pair of gloves and they're medium to large, so they should fit most hands. Um, it does have measurements, 23.5 or 9.25 inches. So it should be a good size to fit most hands. So I think they're really, really good gloves there. Um, I want to show you this too because I haven't looked at it yet, but it looks intriguing. Oh, oh, this is actually a motor panel, and it's under. Oh, look at this! No, I hadn't seen this. Isn't this cute? It's a zoology panel. It's ten ninety nine, and what you've got here is you've got cutting lines. So you could do cushion fronts. You see, this is bringing everything together, isn't it? So you could do a cushion front and then you could free motion embroider around here. And you've got your stabiliser, which you can put on the back of it so that the fabric doesn't all ruffle up and crunch up when you're doing it. Isn't that cute? And this would go really well with our early, early bird two metres of that cream fabric. So it would go well with that. And of course, lots of the mode of fabrics that we were looking at earlier. Let me keep pulling it down. Look at this. Isn't it? Look at these. Look at this. Is this a sloth? And that's a koala. This is a push me pull you, isn't it? A llama. Oh, in the first Dr. Doolittle, he had two heads. You know, head each end. So it was push me pull you. That's in, it was in, in the first, years ago, the first Doctor Doodle, many, many years ago. <laughs> They're really cute, aren't they? They're so sweet. That is so lovely. So it's a, it's a panel and it's uh, 10.99. 10 10.99, yeah. It is, it's, a nice, it's motor quality again, so you know it's good quality. 
It is. It's it's lovely for a nursery. You could make you could make like a bag out of this one here. Look, you could make a drawstring bag. You could make a cushion cover. You could use that, and then you could have some borders. So you can do quite a lot with just these, you know, with the different things on it. If you had a bag, you could have a pocket with a koala on the pocket. So there's lots you could do with each of these bits of the panel. I think that's really cute, actually. That's a nice, nice surprise. Uh, I'm going to recap this. There's still other things on there, so I haven't been through everything. So do, do take a look and see what else we've got on here. Rotary blades, just bringing these back in because um, these, these are brilliant. You, you need new rotary blades for your rotary cutter. Um, it's quite a good idea to buy a spare set when you buy a rotary cutter, to be honest with you, because you will need to put a new one in sooner or later, and there is nothing worse than trying to cut with a blunt plate. It can actually be dangerous too, because you can end up pushing uh, in the wrong direction and cut through your finger, as those who have been here before will know, because I've done that. Um, so, oh, I've just had some fabric thrown at me. This, is, this was our early bird offer. You know, I was saying earlier that this... And it is under 15, so it kind of fits in. So this is a, this is a two metre piece, which is 45 inches wide. So it's two metres and it's a lovely creamy, ecru cream fabric. It's a good quality cotton. So it's just really useful. It's really useful to have um, in your stock because you'll always find a reason for this. It could be a great lining, it could be a backing. Um, it could, you could even make it, you could make that into a bag. If you, if you cut out one of these um, lovely motifs from here, you could applique that on to a bag that you've made out of this sturdy cotton. So it, it is really handy to have. It's 11.96 for two metres, 45 inches wide. This is only till stocks last because we don't have a huge lot of this left, I'm afraid. Um, I want to show you something else. Have we got time for one more thing? Okay, very quickly. Ding, 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 ding. I want to show you this because this is ha this is really handy. Um, I've just I've just randomly put a couple of scissors in, but it's a scissor keep. It's just a block of wood. There's only we've only got four left. But honestly, if you have, as I do, I've got embroidery scissors, dressmaking scissors, and I've got different. I've got paper scissors because you shouldn't cut your paper with the same scissors. So you can just pop them in here. It's just a solid wood thing, so I think it's really nifty. Uh, 10 99 for a little scissor keep. I like it. Do go onto the web. Have a look at everything we've got on there. There was a few other things that I didn't get to, I'm afraid. There's some amazing marking pens. There's a seam gauge. Oh, and there's this. Oh, you yes, see this. This is a crease maker. It's really handy, but I haven't got time to show you properly. So have a look on the website. There's a whole load for you to look at. Um, choose what you like, pop it in your basket, and then um, come back and join me again for our next session where Susie is coming back to join me to talk, I've got to go the right way, to talk about these lovely fabrics. So she has made a quilt top with a panel, which we've got to sell, and uh, some other pieces. So we're going to learn about these new fabrics, more fabrics. What can you do? Get a sewing machine bag to put them in. I will see you again after the break. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.
While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. We'll see you soon. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Welcome back. Here we are with some more fabulous fabrics. Um, and I'm joined again by Susie Duncan, who is going to show us an example or two. But I've got to crack on because we've got so much to see. And what we've got here, we're going to look first at our unicorn bundle. So we have a bundle here. We've bundled together a unicorn panel, which I'm going to open and show you, and three half meters now there's no instructions on this so Susie is going to show she has started a quilt top and she's going to show how she's done that so you'll be able to watch this back if you want to but how you do it is entirely up to you she's just going to show you her interpretation so without further ado oh that's what I was going to do I was going to open up the bundle I was going to say without further ado let me show you this panel and I've stopped. <laughs> Let me show you this panel, look. Ooh. Do you want me to lay it down? Is it all right if I hold it? Isn't that lovely? It's beautiful, isn't it? So that, I mean, that is, you know, the quilt, the centre of your quilt 
or your bed linen already done or a wall hanging it's beautiful isn't it and what we've done with that I always thought, this is the royal we of course um, is we've combined these three beautiful planes so you can use these as borders backing it does the gold does it because of the way it's mm. printed it does make it look glittery yeah. which of course it has to be because it's magical isn't it this is a magical creature let's bring let's bring his head into gear there he is she i should say definitely a she so that if you wanted to do because you've got i mean one and a half meters here because you've got a half a meter of each color um, so this would be lovely. You could just do very simple strip borders or you can do what Susie's done and made a patchwork border which actually looks amazing. So this is really lovely. So these fabrics are again the usual width that you've come to expect, 45 inches, 112 centimetres, a nice piece of plain fabric to add. So you're just making that centre panel really pop out. Um, and this, this pink is a beautiful sort of raspberry pink. It's really lovely. So we're going to show the oh yes before we go before we go over uh, so you can buy this whole set this whole set of three half meters and the panel is 23.46 so that's for the whole lot that's you know cheap for a quilt isn't it really you've got to put your own backing and wadding of course um, but even so that is really fabulous for something that would be so beautiful and much loved i'm sure um, or if you have already got your planes, if you've been buying some of the Moda fabrics earlier or the Liberty fabrics earlier, you might think, well, I've already got fabrics, I could just do with that panel. Um, if you want the panel on its own, then it is $12.99. I'm going to show you this bit as well. That's, look at its tail. Isn't that amazing? It's a detail, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's got a spirally, spirally tail there. Starry bottom. Haven't we all? and uh, <laughs> it's really lovely so that panel on its own um, do we know what the measurements are 35 by 45 inches 35 by 45 inches so it's a really handy panel so you can get that panel on its own or you can get it with the two sorry the three half meters that we've got so now the solid colours, right. So the darkest purple, let's get this one. This, this is a beautiful colour actually. We've got more fabrics in a while. Um, we've got another range of fabrics to go with this, but and these will work with those as well. So this is a really lovely one. So this is this is part of the pack if you buy the whole pack or you can buy individually for £3.49p half a metre in this really lovely rich purpley magenta colour we've also got fuchsia which is uh, sort of pink lovely pink so that's a really pretty pretty pink that is soft pretty pink so again, if you want to buy it individually, £3.49 or it comes part of the bundle if you buy it with the unicorn. And then the other one for this collection is peach. Wow. This is, I mean, this is, this unicorn bundle is selling them remarkably well. We're very pleased with that. Um, so yeah, do think about it if you want it. This is the peach. So again, you can sell it, you can buy it a half a meter on its own at 349, or you can buy it in the bundle for 2346. So that's all three plus the unicorn. There are actually less than 20 left. So if you're interested in that, let's go over to Susie to see how you've made the border, which is behind you. I did, yes. So Borders obviously can be any size you like, um, but I the the ombre effect in the main tail and the rainbow obviously caught my eye, and I wanted to encapsulate that when I did the border. 
Um, and that's what I tend to do when I'm choosing borders, is what is there in, in the piece that yeah, is inspiring some, yeah. me. So I, I did a, a checkerboard effect um, with my pieces simply by cutting squares. Now, I chose a five inch square. Doesn't matter what size you choose, but you want them all the same. So I chose, uh, I cut my squares, then stitched them together with a quarter inch seam, pressed the seams open, and then cut that strip in half lengthways into two and a half inches because obviously it's an, a um, five inch square. So I've already stitched it for you to show because this is a great technique to use and time save as well because you can chain piece, so string them together as you sew and then take the two pieces and just reverse them. So you've got a Battenberg. And you've got a Battenberg. It's brilliant, isn't I it? I think of the Battenberg cake. Oh yeah, it is. That? Absolutely, yeah. I hate, it's my least favourite cake. Yes, yeah, I don't particularly like them, but no, it's, yeah. I don't know why. And then you would then go on to match, when you're matching, make sure you, and this is why I press seams open. If, if you're not going to press open, you end up with quite a bit of fabric, don't you? And you well, you, you can press it. one to one way and one to the other. But not but when it's what one I piece. find <laughs> is that it's easier to match that seam if they're open. Absolutely. Yeah, because what I do, I don't know what technique you use, but I get a pin and I poke it through the seam on both sides and then I know I've got them lined up and then just hold it into place with either a clip or another piece. And I always work from the the seams I'm trying to match out. Yes. Because yes. that Always, way because my can, fabric lies flat. If it's flat. not quite perfect, you can trim the ends. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's all I did. Then I pressed those and joined them to a similar one of pink. Now, because the pink was a pink pink, I could have kept it as one square, but to keep that um, double run look, I did do oh, the okay. same with a pink, so you but obviously it. you don't yeah. rever need yeah. to reverse it. And of course, actually, uh, although we're selling this as a bundle of those three, you could actually put another fabric in there. Absolutely, you? you could do anything you like. Um, another idea I had was to do purple, the, the magenta at the bottom and coming up to sort of a third of the side, then, then the sherbet pink and then the, co the peach colour at yeah. the top. So you've got that sort of ombre look yeah. as well. So, so that's, that's another idea. You, isn't it? Absolutely. And again, whatever width you want to do. And from there, I would then go on to put my wadding on, quilt whatever I wanted to quilt. And it'd be really nice to quilt round the stars to make them I was pop. Thinking that I think round the stars, round the actual unicorn, yes, you could just absolutely. quilt round and make it really sort of pop yeah, out. Yeah, and the, you could follow the arc of yes. the rainbow. He even put a bit of stitch detail into his mane. And if it was going to be a wall hanging, you could add in your beads or sequins to really give it some glitter and pop. But don't yeah. do that if it's bedding, because they don't wash. <laughs> 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 or you'd have a washing machine full of sequins and, and beads. And also, I think if a child, they'd be just sitting there picking oh, at them, wouldn't goodness, they? Yes, they'd be picking at yeah. those Also, it's not comfortable, is it, sitting no. on beads and sequins? No. And then, you'd obviously, you'd um, just do your binding, whatever, however yeah. format you wanted to. But I think this is an absolutely glorious, beautiful quilt for a little person, um, uh, for their bed or yes. for a you know, wall hanging, just a cosy to yeah, snuggle definitely. up and to watch you one could, of their magical you know, if films. You, if you put, um, rather than put wadding and backing on that, yes. if you put a fleece backing yes. on it, you've got, you've a, got a blankie, haven't absolutely. you? Absolutely. Which, yes. which is really special. Exactly. And it becomes more washable as well because yes. then you haven't got the issue with wadding going yeah. solid. But yeah, I mean, there's so much quilting detail that you could do with this if you wanted to. Even at the bottom, I don't know if the camera can pick, there's little wording squiggled in here, so you could even follow that. Yeah. And if you're, if, you know, if you're worried about doing quilting, um, you know, machine quilting, you can do this by hand. Absolutely, yeah. You can I mean, do all that by hand. You could use a big stitch quilting, which basically is big stitches, big, yes. um, by hand. Yep. And that would look stunning. And it would be something to do when you're watching... Uh, married at first sight australia car crash tv can't get enough of it <laughs> <laughs> um but if you use metallic threads as well yeah that would really make these it stars would, shimmer it? wouldn't it it'd be really magical oh yeah i think any little person who's into their unicorns and and fairy tales yes. would absolutely love this i think so so yeah. that that is really lovely so that's that's the kit that's the three pieces of 
coordinating fabric and the panel 2346. But we have got some other fabrics as well. So um, this, is, this is brand new for us. Let's look the, I want to show the, we've got, this is the humming word, hummingbird fabric. So I've got four pieces here. I'm going to start with this one. Um, so this is, and I also, I'm going to show you this, but I also want to show you something that, Susie, you have made these samples. Yes, I've you? made the samples. Before I credit please. you for things you yes. haven't done yeah, yeah. again. No, I'd made, the only thing I hadn't made before was the two was, quilts. Was the two I'd quilts, made everything yeah. else, yes. Um, so these are the, this is, this is the hummingbird. Look at the colours on this. Look at all these birds. Aren't they gorgeous? And look at this is a, this is a project idea, it isn't is. it, that you can use. Look at this. Uh, oh, you can't really see it on there. Can I show it to you on whatever? So it's a tea cosy. Or and a hat, as my or, son or, said. Or, or, <laughs> or, yeah, it's all a hat. And I will show it to you later, but the projects are from um, Debbie Shaw. Now, Debbie Shaw, have I heard of her before? Oh, I don't Let know. Let me think. No. <laughs> so, renowned Debbie Shaw. Um, this is one of her many, many, many books. And um, we will flick through that in a second, but... This is a project I wanted to show you because, you know, it's nice to see, we've seen all these beautiful fabrics, but it's nice to see them actually used for something. So that is beautiful, isn't it? Nice tea cosy. So this is the hummingbird. Let's look at the other colourways of it, though, because that's the sort of soft pink. What do we call that? Have we got a fancy name for it? Oh, hummingbirds on pink. <laughs> Fairly logical. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these names are quite strange. I you're missing. This one, I love this one. I love it because of the way the colours. This is from the same range. This is called, f oh, is that the only thing is all up. Ah, oh, this is quite good. So this is called Flower Talk, as it, as it says on here. But what's nice about this is actually it's sort of, the Flower Talk is up different ways. So it wouldn't yeah. matter too much if you had it up the other way. I think all of these are multi-directional. So actually. that's quite multi-directional. Yeah. Oh, I've I've had um, dressmaking fabric. I was trying to, and I spent an hour and a half trying to decide which way was the right way <sighs> up before I've decided in the end that it was actually multi-directional. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> but yeah, this is. I love all the colours on this. This is really lovely. See, this this would make a great dress. Mm. So we can buy this as a single piece. 749 for half a meter or you can multi buy it in which case you would get enough to make your dress sounds good to me look at that i love that one so uh, that's white same range and this time oh this is good too though flower talk on blue so this is all part of the same range and this is a very lightweight cotton it's lovely I feel very good for something summery Look at these. Again, it's because of the base fabric here, the, the, um, the print on the base, the colours just pop straight out. It's really lovely. So again, it's the flower talk with these different flowers. I'd love to tell you which each of these flowers are, but I don't know. A it's an iris. Are tropical. They are There's quite lily. tropical. There's a lily they? in there. There's an orchid. Well, that's an orchid, isn't it? Yeah. Is that a fuchsia or is that something like a fuchsia? I think that's a lily. Oh, that's passion, is it? Yeah. I got a pot plant from my son for Christmas. It died. Shh, don't tell him. Just buy a new one, he'll never know. <laughs> I don't think I killed it. I think it was, I think it was wrong in the first place because a week after he'd given it to me and I hadn't overwatered it, but the whole, the whole stalk was just rotted. Oh. So Maybe I think it, it was already been overwatered or and something. And then got chilled. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I'm not to kill it. Yeah, th that's the botany <laughs> lesson over for today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, even though my name's Gardener, I don't, I'm not very good at it. Okay, so those are three colours. Um, and then we've got some, we've got a plane if you wanted coordination. So that is obviously is that on the website. Well? I don't know if the green is, but is that, there's green available on the website. Okay. I say I've got some here. Oh, the pink's not in the range. We've just we just sort of coordinated coordinated it just to show how you can put a plane with it. So, and I just want to show this quickly as well because I think it's really nice to see. So this again, this is using that range. Look, a very simple bag. It's reversible. Which is reversible. Oh, look at that. So this is using some of the planes 
as well. And then look at that. That's nice, isn't it? That's very pretty. Very simple bag, pleats to make it, give it the shape. That's lovely, that. That's a, that's a really pretty bag made by my colleague here. <laughs> So where are these projects from? They're all Ooh, from Debbie Shaw's from book. Debbie Shaw's book. <laughs> they are. Um, while you've got that bag, just to let you know, it will fold up. Because it's not got any wadding in it, it folds up really small, will fit in your pocket. So when you're shopping, you've, you've got, got a bag. You've got a handy bag. And because it's pleated, the design's pleated, it's given you that extra room so you don't get just one item in it. You can get quite a bit yeah. of shopping in there. So it's a brilliant little project yes again also a great project for posting if you need a birthday present yeah. for somebody now and you can't get to them then yeah it's that's a great quite it's a nice project one. for that isn't it yeah yeah and it's useful so i like this well, now we're, we're telling you to buy fabric and this says it's for leftover pieces um, <laughs> but you know what you can use it for leftover pieces or you can buy fabrics for it um, this one is half yard home so if you if, if i mean i'm sure you, everybody watching knows debbie shaw if you know debbie shaw you know she's done a lot of half yard books this is hard half yard home and it has just lots and lots of simple projects to make very clear instructions very clear uh, photographs to help follow through um, Picnic placemat. Is that what you said you were going That's to do? That's what I'm going to do. All oh, right. For so us. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, yeah. Susie's going to show us the picnic placemat. So I'll go on that. Oh, what did you? What was your favourite when you went through this? Um, I actually loved making the reversible bag because it's a, it's something that I've always wanted to make because I am constantly well used to constantly be dashing in and out of places and you fumble for a bag, don't you? Yeah. But it's also great to store my projects by the sofa or my um, I, I belong to a reading group so uh, you know a book club so it's nice to have my book that's on the go in there as well it's a really useful little bag very easy to make all of the projects that I've tackled on here have been really useful and I would say they're not just for the home because they're the sort of things that you can take out and about with you if you've got a um, you, when you go on holiday, if you've got a motorhome, you, you can use them for those sorts of things yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. There's a great section on just really dressing up your picnic. So hopefully, cross fingers and everything, when we're we'll be able to have, to picnics have again. outdoor picnics with more than just one person from our household in the summer. So it'd be really lovely to have a celebratory picnic where you had everything matching. But you can still keep them individual because the project we're going to do has a little pocket so you can put everybody's knife, fork and yes. spoon in it. So everyone has their own one. But to coordinate it with, you know, a bag with the bottles of things in it or the, the basket with your special bread that you've made yes. in there or not made or bought, whatever. It's just, I, these are real go-to projects for not just the home. Great gift ideas. They're really good. And they don't take onerous amounts of fabric. So even when you buy the half metre, you'll get lots of the projects out of that half yes. metre, which is really good. They also use odds and bits, and you can change them up, change them down for you as well. The Tea Cozy, that's a, a really easy project to do. In fact, I made one um, with my daughter. I taught, was, I'm teaching her sewing <laughs> from a distance. We do a WhatsApp video oh call. Um, and this week's project was the tea cosy because she needed another tea cosy. Um, so she managed to do that, managed to cut her, her dome herself and everything. We left the ribbon bit out because neither of us hang our tea cosies, so we didn't need the ribbon. So that's what I mean. You can personalise it yourself. You could quilt it more if you wanted to. But once you start building these projects up, your knowledge and your confidence in sewing increases at an exponential rate i mean it's just brilliant it really is good really clear instructions and there's pictures as well so even if you can't understand the wording you can see the picture mm -hmm. 
and that's again really useful. It is, yeah. It's beautifully presented as usual. Search Press are very good at yeah. the way they present books. Okay, so shall we? Um, shall we so we're waxing lyrical about this book, but I'm sure everybody's it keen is. to and see this project. Now I've lost my project. place. Uh, it's to, what was it towards the back? Yeah, it is in the picnic section. There we go. Picnic placemat. It's really cool. So for it, you just need a top piece of fabric and a bottom piece of fabric. So I've chosen to use um, the two flower pieces, the flower talk. Now I'm going to put the white on the top and the blue underneath. That's just from personal preference. You need a piece of wadding and they all measure the same. So they're 14 by 10 inches which is 35.5 by 25.4 <laughs> centimetres, if you're into that. Then you need a strip that go, is going to go across the width. Now for this, the first job we've got to do is a bit of pressing. And you need a pocket piece. And again, I've chosen to use the pink hummingbird. And they actually all coordinate I really well. I know, that's well. the thing that's so lovely, isn't it? It uh, is. We mentioned wadding. We haven't shown you wadding this, this um, hour, but there is plenty on the website. So if you do need wadding, there's plenty for you to get on the website. So I'm just going to grab my iron. Okay, just got to wait for it to... The great thing about these little irons is they warm up really quickly. So the first thing you do, obviously, is make sure all your fabrics are pressed flat. And it was till I grabbed it in the green room. And we're going to attach the strip of fabric to the front piece of our... Um, of your mat. Of the, of the yeah, the uh, main piece. And so there should be the same width. And to do that, all you're going to do is press over a quarter of an inch all the way along. And now you can get your ruler out and measure it by all means, but I can't imagine anyone is going to come along and you check, check your, your measurements. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you, if you want to do it perfectly accurately, that's entirely up to you. I don't think even Debbie Shaw would come and no, police it for you wouldn't. she hasn't got the time so i just gauge it by eye and you find it's it tends to fall quite nicely for you then you're going to find your top piece of fabric again i'm this is why i love this little iron because having it by the side of me i can constantly be pressing yes because no amount of pressing uh, loads of pressing can hide a lot of issues it can it makes now, the job look so much better. absolutely now the thing to remember is the idea of the pocket is to hold your cutlery so what you don't want to be doing is putting this band up here if this is the top because your cutlery will be poking out the top you want your cutlery encased so you want to position your band so it's at about just over the half at the, on its top le top edge so that when your pocket goes in, your cutlery is still going to be within the So height. the band is just for decoration? Absolutely. So what I thought would be a really lovely idea, and I'm not going to do it now, but when you do yours at home, is you can personalise them. Yes, so you, you could, could embroider could someone's initials or their name yeah. or their favourite icon, or if it's a 60th birthday party, yes. 60 or happy birthday or whatever you want on there. So do all that at this stage, is what I'm saying. <laughs> And I'm going to pin all this into place so it doesn't move. So I've lined up the two shorter edges and I'm just going to pin my band in place. And then we're going to top stitch. Again, you can use a decorative stitch if you prefer a decorative stitch or you can just do a plain straight stitch. You can hand stitch it so if you don't have a machine these projects are still doable by hand obviously they'll take you a bit longer but all of the projects are doable by hand definitely so I'm gonna take this over to the machine I'm gonna set it to my quarter inch and top stitch that down whoops do you know, you can only press a pedal if it's the right way up. <laughs> Actually, do you know, sometimes if you find the pedal's difficult to 
tight, you know, get the, the speed that you want. If you turn it up the other way, it's sometimes, sometimes easier. Sometimes it is, yes. It's crazy, but yeah, it's sometimes easier to, yeah. to actually determine the speed of it. Yes. And changing your shoes as well. Yes. Because heels on shoes make a difference, yes. don't they? Yes, I don't normally sew with heels on, I must admit. I tend to take my, I was going to say my feet off, I tend <laughs> to take my slippers <laughs> off when I'm at home. <laughs> so this is a project that is in this book here, which you're actually working from, isn't it? It's one it of, is, I don't know, yes. It doesn't actually say how many, does it say on the back how many? Um, Just because it's full of projects, it doesn't say how many. It is, yeah, and it goes round your house, so you've got yeah. bedroom projects, living room projects, Ooh, it says, kitchen projects. Make your projects. home beautiful with over 30 projects that are kind to your pocket and simple to make. But they are the sort of projects that you can quickly whistle up for an occasion. So if you wanted a tea cosy for spring, summer, autumn, winter and Christmas, you can make f five tea cosies. Yes. It's, they're not projects that take you forever and a day to do, which is great because then they become projects that you will do. And I'm just going to stitch this side down, say exactly the same. Oh, so on, you're not going to do what um, Debbie's done on this, are you? you so on the project in here, it's, she's got the corners rounded off. Yes. And she's used bias binding around the edges. Yes. Um, but you're actually going to leave the corners square. I am. And then use binding that's not bias. Yes. Yeah. Um, so bias binding, just to, just to those that don't know perhaps, is cut on the bias, which is on the diagonal. Um, because if you think of a piece of fabric, Selvage to selvage, it's the crosswise grain. It's a little bit of stretch, but not a lot. Lengthwise, there's virtually nothing. But on the bias, you'll get a lot more stretch. And the point of that is that you can go around curves and corners without getting rumpled, crumpled bits. So you cut the, the fabric strips for bias binding on the bias. And to find the bias easily, um, what you do is you take your cut edge, which is this edge along here, and you fold it up to the selvage, so it's parallel with the selvage, and the true bias is then the diagonal here. That's your bias, if you're going to make your own. Um, but we actually have some bias binding on the show to today, so you don't have to make your own. You can actually use ready-made bias binding. Although I must say, making bias binding out of uh, Liberty Fabrics it just adds that real lovely finish to anything it, it really does. It does, yes. yes. Um, but we do have some bias bindings here, so you don't have to go to that palaver if you don't want to. Cool. So, I've so, now, so now what I've done is got this, the pocket piece and uh, one of the short edges, which I've now designated the top, I've just again pressed it down by a quarter of an inch and that gets top stitched as well. So you don't double turn it, just a single no, turn? No, just a single turn, it says. But if you wanted to do a double turn, it's your project. Remember, Debbie has written some fabulous projects, beautiful, beautifully written. But at the end of the day, it is your project. So they are guidelines. They aren't definitive. Well, that's the whole point things. of making it yourself, isn't it? Absolutely. You choose the fabric colours. Yep. And you can choose to leave things out, put things on. That's up to you as well. Exactly. Yeah. And you, you, it's, you've got to live with it or give it away to yeah. someone you know. Like, so um, make you know, it a project that you like. Top stitching, people get frightened about because top stitching is basically stitching that's on the, on the surface. Yes. And if you're a bit unsure about being accurate and keeping your rows straight, leave it out. You know, it doesn't have to be done. So you, you no. have that option. Yeah. I remember when I was... Um, a teenager and I made a pair of red velvet trousers. Awesome. Which in the day, they was, it was cool, okay? They were really cool. But they had a welt pocket on the back. Right. Uh, so a welt pocket is a pocket that's got like the lips. Yeah. You know the lips? And when you sew a welt pocket, it's quite fiddly to get the corners perfect. And I did and I managed, but my goodness was it fiddly and difficult to do. And really what I should have done is left the pocket out. That's what I should, because I was making them. I didn't have to have a pocket in the no. back. I could have left that pocket out. Yeah, and I think when you are new to sewing, you do tend to think you have to stick to the letter of the law, don't mm. you? Um, 
definitely. Unless you're a rebel like me and you, and you don't at all. <laughs> so um, the next stage you're going to do is each of the other three sides on your pocket, you're going to then press over by quarter of an inch. And that is purely because when you're stitching it, it gives a nice neat finish and you're not got any frayed edges. Um, but what I've done is as I've pressed it, I'm mitering the corners just so that I get a nice flat um, corner as well, she says. So basically you've turned the corner in like yeah, a little Yeah, so I've pressed it. You've got a square. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Might be better actually if I flip the mat, but I promise I won't use the iron. <laughs> Is that better? That shows it better, doesn't it? So where I've pressed, I've got, I've created a small square. If I fold that down so that the square, the lines on the square edges are in line with my pressed creases, I can then fold in these two sides and it just gives me a mitre. And then I would normally press that, but obviously on this side of the mat, I'm not going to do that. And then I hold that down with a clip before I sew. So I'll just do that on this side. It's You don't have to do this. You can just leave it as the, the two straight edges, but I, this is what I tend to do just it's just that a little bit neater, isn't it? Yeah. Because sometimes if you just fold them in, you can end up with one kind of poking out a little tiny bit, can't Absolutely. you? Absolutely, yeah. So again, I'm just going to clip that. Not that anybody's going to judge you for that. <sighs> wow. <Well, laughs> don't know. <laughs> the Debbie Shaw police, you know. <laughs> so then what you want to do is take your piece, make sure it's the right way round, and decide where you want your pocket. Now, to one side is suggested. So let's oh, let's get it the right way up as well. Remember the side that you've top stitched you are not going to sew down because, because otherwise you pocket. will not be able to put anything in. It'll no longer be a pocket, it it'll be a patch. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yes. It'll be the lining for your pocket. So I am going to pin this into place. And you're using those I'm magic using magic pins, pins aren't you? Yeah. Love my magic pins. Yeah, I, it just makes me feel like it is going to work magic and make my <laughs> project unbelievably brilliant and my sewing straight and all the rest well, of I it. Well, I think you should, you should have used them on your unicorn for sure. Absolutely. Oh, I definitely used them on the Good. unicorn. Definitely. You've got to have magic pins of your magic unicorn. Yes. Everyone needs a bit of magic in their life, don't they? Right, let's move that out of the way because I will end up burning myself. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is stitch again round those three sides. Remember, not the top side. I've deliberately not put pins there, so I know I'm not going to touch that. I know, side. so easy, isn't it, to um, get carried away when you're talking and not concentrating perfectly on that? Absolutely. Yes, yes. I was doing something the other day and completely did it wrong. So I had a lovely unpicking job. Don't you just love unpicking? Oh, yes, unpicking. Um, um, pick is a girl's best friend. <laughs> oh, yeah. One thing um, that isn't in the instructions, but that I would have, I'm going to do, is what I always do at the top and bottom of pockets, is just um, start off a little bit and do a double backwards and forwards, you know, double stitch, just because the t where you go into a yeah. pocket, it gets wear and it tear. Can. So you it's can just do like a little triangle or reinforce it you with can, a double stitch, absolutely. as you say. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that's the only thing I've added so far to, to the pattern. Um, but I often find that, though, you look at something and think, oh, I, I do it slightly differently, yes. so you do it the way you do it. Absolutely. You don't, you don't want to feel uncomfortable doing this, so do whatever it is you do. So we're going to do that. And again, you could do this with a decorative stitch. You don't have to do a straight stitch. As long as you don't cover the whole of the pocket up with decorative stitches, because otherwise you'll never get anything inside. But <laughs> it won't be a pocket anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it'll just be a decorative patch. <laughs> but at the moment, I'm only working on these layers. There's no wadding in as yet. Oh, not bad guess. When it's not your machine, it's sometimes hard to guess, isn't it? Oh, where, where you get to a quarter inch. Yeah. 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 Especially one that you've only used 
since you've arrived this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but that just goes to show how easy that machine is to use. Yeah, absolutely, it? yes. It really is easy. I did have to have some assistance to thread, do the automatic needle threader because it was very different from mine. Oh, I love the automatic needle threader. Oh, absolutely. It does spoil you though, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It doesn't work on a twin needle though. You have to thread by eye with a twin needle. Yes. Yeah, I think you do on mine, actually. You do on every machine. Yeah. I, d I just say that because when I first got a machine with a twin needle, put a twin needle in and then the automatic needle thread, I thought I'd try if it breaks it. So don't do it. I wasn't thinking I put my pins in the wrong way around, but never mind, we're there. That's the beauty of having those big heads, though, isn't it? It's easy it is. to pull them out. Absolutely, yeah. Cool. So that's that bit done. So, so I'm just going to so cut you, my threads. Do you, do you divide the pocket? Um, no, she hasn't divided the pocket, but that's another idea you can do. The reason that she hasn't is because in her illustration, if I bring the book in, you can see she's got her napkin folded and there is a, there is a recipe, I was going to say, there is <laughs> a pattern in here for a um, a folded napkin which is brilliant because you get a double-sided napkin then so again okay. great personalization thing but that's why she hasn't divided the pocket so you can slip your napkin inside as well yeah and then your knife fork spoon um, so yeah I think it's brilliant so then so that's what we've got to that um, point then what you're then going to do is put your wadding on the back of this the instructions suggest a repositional adhesive and I, this one was handy so I'm going to use this one and I'm not going to spray it on the mat because it will be tacky so excuse me while I just spray this I'm going to yeah, spray so normally it. if you spray this spray you should do it with an open window um, yes uh, you shouldn't really spray indoors without an open window but I it did it well adhesive. away from everybody yeah. Yes, I was doing a lot of spraying the other day and my poor dog just looked at me and left oh, the room. Oh, yes, they can actually make you quite high, can't they? You yeah. Don't, you don't want that. We, um, I opened the wind. I had the windows open, but even so, he was like, really? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> so, But it is very handy to put some layers together very quickly. Absolutely, yes. So I have um, left my wadding a little bit bigger, which is what I tend to do, and then I trim it once it's on. So I'm just going to whiz round with my rotary cutter and ruler just taking off that excess but this I saved those I was bits saying for earlier stuffing. about um, you know using your rotary cutter and making sure the blade is sharp because if you if you get a blunt rotary cutter blade and you're starting to cut Ooh. through layers and things it's really really painful to have to keep going back and back and back to try and yeah. get that line cut well that's and when it can cause accidents yes it also is when you start fraying your fabric as well. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, it's same with mach sewing machine needles. We were saying earlier, weren't we, how often you you busy so busy sewing, you forget, yeah. when was the last time I changed my needle? I must admit, <laughs> I'm a stickler for changing needles, and uh, I do change them after every project. But, but you're right, you can, you can, if you're doing lots of little things, you can forget. Yes. And you can normally tell, actually, well, you get skip stitches if you leave it long enough. Um, and if you get skip stitches, like really every now and then they become very long and that sort of thing, that's because your needle's blunt. Um, or it can snag fabric, so that's not a good thing it can do. But you can often hear it as well, I think. You can hear it yeah. sort of Absolutely. going through where it it's blunt. It sounds dead. Yeah. You know, it sounds it's like just, a thud. Yeah, it's a rather thud. So yeah. if, you, if your needle's thudding, change it. Yeah. Probably Blunt. I definitely need to change mine when I get home today. Yeah. The amount I've done over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I do use spray, um, base spray, what I do do is position from the middle and squeeze out, yeah. if that makes sense, so that you've not got any lumps, bumps, and it's all even. And we're good to go. We're going to bind. So as Wendy said, the instructions say use bias binding because um, Debbie had rounded the corners on this. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. I hate bias binding. <laughs> I love bias binding. Um, I hate <laughs> making bias binding. So I'm quite happy to do traditional quilt binding. <laughs> so you're going to do traditional, but we have got, so if anybody yes. wants to follow the pattern, we have got f uh, five colourways yeah. of bias binding. And I think they all do all coordinate, especially with the pink hummingbird one. Yes. Yeah. 
So this is the um, linen coloured, sort of light brown. So this is actually a narrow, this is a narrow bias binding. Yes, it is narrow, um, yeah. 2.5 metres and uh, sewing street, that's not helping me. Um, I w just wanted to double check the width of it. 12 millimetres, yes. 12 millimetre binding. Um, so that's the linen one. Um, we also have cream. So it's the same amount, two and a half metres, same width. So these are all the same width and that's the cream. Oh. They, they are useful because I, I actually use these for piping as well. Yes. So if I was using it for piping, yeah. I open it out yeah. and press it flat yeah. and then fold it in half like you've got for your quilter spine. Yes. And then I've already got a bias tape ready yes. for putting my piping cord in and it just saves cutting bias strips. Yes. So I use bias binding for piping as well. And yeah. you, you can use it for mock piping as well. Yes, you can. Yes. So it's, it is quite useful to have in, the, yeah. in, the, in your arsenal. Especially the thin um, one. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I've now got sky pink. Blue. This is blue even. <laughs> it's been a long morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. This is, I'm rubbing just, off like, on just, you, I was, Wendy. I was just, I was just <laughs> testing. <laughs> so, these, I mean, these are really silly prices. Look, 149 for two and a half metres of the sky blue. And you'll get two placemat edges from each of those. So, that, yeah, that's yeah. good then. So you Very only good, need half it? of one of those to go half round your placemat. Because yeah, yeah. they go quite a long way. Um, and here we have a ruby red. Scarlet, okay. That would look awesome against the blue. It would. I mean, uh, any one of these colours would work yeah, with absolutely. these fabrics, actually. They yeah. look really lovely. So that's a really nice one. And then finally, we have the yellow. But you could, So you can use the bias binding, as Debbie has suggested in her book, or you can do what Susie's doing, um, and she's going to show us. So these, are these, you know, pop them in your bag. They're useful to have. As I say, you can use them for piping or for bias binding or for having an accent trim. Um, or you can cut up strips from your fabric, your, um, con your complementary fabric. Mm -hmm. So what width strip did you cut? So I've cut a two inch actually. Normally for quilts I'd use a two and a half inch strip. Um, but I've done a two inch for this one. And you've just cut it on the straight grain. Straight because grain you're not cut. Going to go it's around not curves biased. And corners. It, exactly, yes. That's all I've done. Um, because this was just, you can even make it scrappy. So I, I, I had thought if you've got bits left over, you can just piece them together to make your yes. binding as well. So again, it makes it a good thrifty project. <laughs> um, so I've you've joined two, two, two pieces, inch strip, which two inch strip. Then Joined folded in half. to, yeah, folded in half and pressed it. Give it a really good press, so you've got a nice crisp edge. I usually err on the side of caution and leave quite a decent amount to play with, and I start just before a corner because my ultimate aim is to join it. But I tend to join it at the bottom, so I don't know why I did that. I've turned it upside down. There you go. So, and I don't pin it other than the first bit just to clip it into place. Um, and then I wing it. <laughs> no, I find even when I'm putting bias binding on, I find because it, it does tend to stretch a bit as you're sewing it anyway because yes. it's bias binding. Um, and if you've if you've pinned and tacked it all the way around, you can guarantee that it you have to it's undo move. it. So yeah. I do exactly as you do. Yeah. Well, I normally start the edge halfway along. Halfway along. Um, yes. The reason I don't is because I invariably find I will f join it at the halfway or as near to the halfway yeah. as I can. But I always give myself a bit extra lee room to, turn, to swizzle, to stitch. Because the number of times I've started there and then got to joining and I'm trying to play around with like a four inch piece of fabric and that's mental. I've learnt that if I give myself a lot of space, <laughs> I'm not going to be cursing myself at the end. Um, the other thing, if, tip I picked up, was if you aren't confident about finding the quarter inch on a to stop at, you can just mark it with a heat diffusible pen or pencil, because you're never going to see it again, 
um, the quarter inch from the corner because that's roughly where you're going to stop to do your corner mitre or where I stop it. Is, it is a good idea to do that because it, you know you want it to be accurate so the corners are nice and crisp um, but it, it is quite difficult to gauge that quarter inch isn't it when you come towards the end. Yeah especially live on air. So <laughs> are you using a regular stitch length? Have you increased your stitch length? I am going to use, I tend to use, mine at home is on 2.5, so I'm going to go for a 2. Point, well, it's gone to 2.6 on here because it does evens. Um, but it's a oh, quarter inch seam as well. Quarter inch seam again. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to sew up to that quarter inch mark or as near to it as I dare, needle down, lift up and then sew at 45 degrees, don't get your protractor out, just guesstimate it, um, into and off the corner. Now I cut my thread, but if you want to save thread you don't have to, but uh, just to show you what I do, it's easier off camera, uh, on, under the camera. So. <laughs> From that 45 degree, I bring the binding up so that I've created a nice 45 degree angle here. And I then bring it down on itself so that that crease lines up with the corner like that. And again, I clip it because if I sneezed or something on the way to the sewing machine, it would all move. And I do <laughs> tend to... <laughs> We're talking about a lot of sneezing today. Yeah. Not, that, not that either of us have. I was going to say, not one of us has sneezed all morning, <laughs> but, you know, it'll be what's its law, won't it? And I tend... And you see, the reason, I, the reason we're probably saying it is when you're um, handling fabrics and yeah. waddings and things, you can get quite a lot of fibres in the air. Yeah. So you can find that you sneeze. So uh, I then take it back to the sewing machine. <laughs> See, now I'm just going to think sneeze and I'm going <laughs> to try desperately hard not to. Um, when you start sewing, you're going to start a quarter inch in right on that top crease. You're not going to carry on the stitch line that you have just finished, but make sure you do start on the end. I love that thud thud noise when you've got wadding in there. <laughs> yes, well. it's because um, it goes through the thicker layers. Yeah. So sewing up the side, and again, I'm going to stop just quarter of an inch short of the corner. So um, just aware of the time yep. here. When we, when you get, when you've been all the way round, yeah, um, and you I'll turn it to the other do, side, shall I? Um, Let's do, do you that. hand sew the other side? I do, <laughs> I do. Um, yes. Uh, shall I? How long have we got? Right. In, I won't go all the way round because that will take a while. But what I will show you is how I would go about joining this That's bit, and then idea. I'll show yeah. you the other bit. So when you get Imagine this is all sewn around the edge. So what I would then do is decide where I wanted my join. So if I want it here, I would position, fold that back and this piece say finished here. So I'd fold them so they both meet here like this. And I would really press that well with my iron so that I've got really good creases. Then I can open those up, put right sides together, and I've got that one upside down, but never mind, you've got the idea, and stitch them with my quarter inch on, um, quarter inch seam, but the crease is not where you're stitching, it's uh, is where you're stitching. Yeah, yeah so sorry. You, you increases yeah. your stitching your crease line. Your crease is my stitching line. So yeah. you haven't got to think about a quarter of an inch or anything. You're stitching where those press lines are. And that's why it's really important to press well. I even spray a bit of best press as I'm 
pressing so I do get a really crisp yeah. and then you can cut the excess off you can then press your seam open before you lay it flat again to finish and join your stitching so that's what I would do there and then when I come to stitch sew it to the back I then finger press it open and there's a trick I use for the, the mitre corners as well finger press it open again I would press that press it over to the back and I clip it to hold its position you can stitch in the ditch if you wanted to or do a zigzag stitch or decorative stitch all the way round but I do, as Wendy said, <laughs> you hand I hand stitch it because I have nothing else to do with my life. <laughs> um, but no, I, I just like the fact that you can't see any stitching. I think it yeah. just so the, creates I mean, the, other, the other way to do it, if you're more like me, you don't like hand stitching too much, is you put the binding onto the reverse and then bring it over to the front. Yes. And then you can top stitch it right along the edge on the front. You can, yes. You can do it anyway. Yes. So. Anyway, I think we are at the point where we actually need to... Do you want to do that I while I talk and then we can come back and look at it? Hopefully, quickly. yes. Um, yes, yes, yes. Because we need to look at the... Um, recap some of the fabric so we can see that. White flower talk fabric. Brand new today. And this is beautiful. Look at the colours of this. And this is a reversible bag from Debbie Shaw's book. You can't really see it, can you? Because it's on, the, on that. But this is the book that, uh, the bag that's from the book that Susie has made. And the next one, so this is Flower Talk on Blue. Now this actually is the most popular one that we've got at the moment. So beautiful flowers on there. Just take the label off of my hand. Um, so it's really lovely. So that's, this is the flower. So it's flower talk. It says flower talk in flowers. Isn't that sweet? And all these lovely exotic flowers that I can't name for you. <laughs> there's, a z there's bound to be a zinnia in there, isn't there? <laughs> and then we've got the hummingbird fabric. I like that idea as well. This is, this is one. You've used this on the pocket, haven't you, for that mat? Yes. So this is the hummingbird fabric. So there's lots of people have this in the basket, so do remember to check it out. Um, beautiful hummingbirds, beautiful colours on them. This is really lovely. So it's a soft sort of pink background with these lovely colours. So that is all the time we have to look at these fabrics, but they are on the website, don't forget. So I'm going to sh tell you the menu for tomorrow's Sewing Street. Um, but of course, we have got Yarn Lane coming up at 12 um, and you need to if you want to um, join us on that on your Facebook or tablet you need to go to the yarn lane um, I don't know what one that is but you have to go to the yarn lane state uh, yarn lane dot com um, and uh, so that's where to go but I will be back with that but let's first look oh my goodness more fabrics so tomorrow we have at eight o'clock fabulous fabrics who's the who's the presenter John so you've got you've got uh, gorgeous John with fabulous fabrics tomorrow. Um, more jelly roll quilts. I love jelly roll quilts with Delphine Brooks, who is amazing uh, mixed media textile artist, fabulous. Then you've got some pre pre cut fabrics at ten, um, and then blooming ocean fabrics. So again, Delphine will have some amazing demo to do. I know, uh, and then adjust adjust uh, forms and dressmaking tools. So adjust form. Um, for they are where the, oh they're behind me <laughs> behind me here. I, could, I knew they were there somewhere I'm going to see so you've got the adjuster form which are really good to create your own um, mannequin so that you can actually fit clothes to you so thanks ever so much Susie thank you um, have, have you have you got it that we can show nearly there I haven't finished it but we're almost I'm there. afraid we're going to have to leave corners. it um, but yeah we're going to have to leave got it so she's done. almost at that last corner. But uh, thank you ever so much for watching. Do join us on Yarn Lane in uh, just a few minutes on yarnlane.com. Um, and uh, thank you very much, Susie, for thank joining you. us today. It's been good.